Sophia was betrayed by her fiancé, Crown Prince Raymond, as well as her close friend Samantha, and now her entire family is dead. But when she opens her eyes, she discovers that she has returned to the past, even before her engagement to Raymond. To save her family and avoid an engagement to the second prince, Sophia decides to make his older brother Alexis crown prince and avenge both of them. But this path is full of dangers. Tears simply blurred her eyes, and she could not stop them. How stupid she is. But my parents said that you can't trust people like that. But these were the closest people, her fiancé and friend. And she believed them. She did everything to make everyone comfortable in this situation. And until today, it seemed to Sophia that the crown prince and her best friend were the two closest and most faithful people to her. Samantha watched as the girl was lying on the floor covered in blood and dying from pain. But she didn't care. She hated Sophia with all her heart because she had everything one could wish for. And it infuriated her. There was also not a drop of compassion in Raymond's eyes. On the contrary, he was glad that with the help of Sophia, he achieved the status of crown prince. But while her family is alive, he cannot fully develop his campaign. Therefore, they will all die. She, like her parents, have already played the role the crown prince needed. And now they are thrown away like old things, in simple words. They are liquidated. And the girl can't do anything. They will simply kill her in cold blood, like the rest of the family. How Sophia wishes she could have another chance and turn back time. She would then have found a way to change the situation in such a way as to protect the people close to her and take revenge on the traitors for everything. Suddenly the girl woke up. If it weren't for the bright rays of light that made their way through the window, she would still be asleep, and this nightmare would not have stopped for several more hours. But thank God it's all over. There was a knock on the door and a maid appeared on the threshold. She apologized and said that it was time to put herself in order. The young Mrs. Hare is very disheveled, and she looks, let's say, quite rumpled. Perhaps, yes, she probably looks wrinkled, and she feels terrible inside, too. It's all because of a terrible nightmare. She urgently needs to get up and get back to normal. The girl asked the maid for a mirror, and when it was in her hands, she simply froze, sitting in bed. Something strange happened. She began to look much younger and does not understand how this happened. Anya's maid, it seems, also saw that not everything was all right with the young mistress, but she blamed it all on the fact that she was not yet fully awake. But then Sophia suddenly asked what year it was. The maid replied that it was now the 11th month of the year 549 of the O'Clean era, and that meant she went back two years. Now she is 17 years old again, and everything that happened to her was just a nightmare. But she had never had such a plausible dream before. Therefore, you need to check everything thoroughly. Everything was very realistic, and no one seems to know what will happen in two years except Sophia. Ani decided that her mistress was just fooling around. That's why she said that she could do stupid things until the evening, but only until the evening, because then she needs to get ready for the ball. And this matter is not a joke at all. What? Ball? Exactly. Two years ago she was at this event and remembers it very well, but she has absolutely no desire to appear there a second time. Although you can change something in your future, she knows it. The maid said that she would prepare Sophia's outfit and help her get ready. She assured that her owner would look her best. And the girl breathed out a sigh of relief. How good she is, her faithful Ani. It was Ani who stayed with her family when trouble came and all the servants fled. This girl stayed with her until the end, until the crown prince and Samantha decided to deal with her and her family. She was even present on the day when these traitors broke into their home and began to kill her relatives. Perhaps she was killed too. Perhaps she managed to hide or escape. I wonder what's wrong with her now. For the sake of this faithful and good-natured maid, and for the sake of her family, she will put an end to all these atrocities and restore justice. The girl did not doubt this for a second. And so you need to take everything apart. What information does she have? It is now clear that there are two whole years left before her death. This means that there is still time, and she will be able to fully develop a plan for her revenge. But it dawned on her that very soon she would be engaged to that damn Raymond. She was so stupid and naive that she did not even understand that this alliance was beneficial to him in order to become the crown prince. 
Thinking further, the girl suddenly remembered that her engagement to Raymond was organized by her father. And if she doesn't hurry up now, she won't be able to prevent a terrible tragedy later. This traitor and murderer will be proclaimed crown prince and heir to the throne of the empire if she does not change the future now. Therefore, you need to try very hard. After all, the lives of her family and the state depend on her. In order to become the crown prince in their country, one must have royal blood and the obligatory support of the nobility. Sophia Edelball's family was the second most influential after the royal family. The engagement to the second prince, Raymond Auckland, is a contract beneficial to both parties. With the support of the duke's family, Raymond will undoubtedly be able to become crown prince and then receive the right of succession. In turn, the Edelball family, having made their beloved daughter the wife of the crown prince, only strengthened their position in high society. But the fact is that the vile Raymond immediately killed all of Sophia's relatives as soon as he became crown prince. As long as the Edelball family continues to exist, this fraudster and murderer will never have real power. And this was the main reason for everything that happened, which now she urgently needs to change. If she becomes his bride this time, then, despite all the influence he has in society and at the imperial court, Raymond, whatever one may say, will have to reckon with the famous Edelball family. Unable to come to terms with this state of affairs, this scoundrel, having used Sophia's entire family for his own purposes, decided to immediately get rid of her and all her relatives. And then he succeeded. This situation simply pissed her off. She rose from her chair and shouted to the whole house that she would never let this happen again in her life. Now, she will be the main one in this game called Cold Revenge. And she will spare no effort and take revenge on yet another person. After all, it was not only Raymond who betrayed her. Samantha, their mutual friend, turned out to be that deceitful creature and was preparing a plan to kill Sophia behind her back. But where should she start? It is too difficult and unsafe to act alone. But the point is that no one would believe her if she said that she was in the future and knew exactly what would happen in two years. Well, of course she remembered one man. This is the first prince and heir to the Empire, Alexis Olent. This guy is not at all like the others, especially this traitor Raymond. Alexis was the unlucky hero in the novel. He is Raymond's older brother, His Majesty's firstborn. But because his mother was an ordinary maid, the boy could not receive the same support as the second prince. Unlike Alexis's mother, Raymond's mother was born into the family of a famous and influential duke. And thanks to her connections, the aristocracy took the side of the second prince. As a result, society close to the imperial palace always favored Raymond and his mother. And Alexis was sent away from the capital to the farthest castle, which belonged to the emperor. However, the young man studied a lot and worked on himself. He was incredibly interested in military service. He soon became a famous, experienced military general and won the respect of the people of the country. The first prince managed to achieve serious support among the common people, and then the emperor began to doubt the candidacy of the future prince. It was obvious that Alexis was much better suited to be the heir. The vile Raymond realized that the title could elude him in the near future and saw in his brother a real enemy. And a plan to eliminate a dangerous rival began to mature in my soul. It is clear that the second prince was supported by the entire aristocracy. But this was not enough, because behind Alexis there were ordinary people. In addition, the first prince was much stronger in the military field. Proud Raymond could not tolerate this, so he tried to have the first prince sent to war. But a few months later, he managed to complete it, of course, with the victory of the Kingdom of Oakland, but he paid for it with his life. He died in the decisive battle. This was the reason why Alexis began to be called an unlucky hero. But this is exactly the person she definitely needs. With him, she could go against Raymond and try to defeat him. But the trouble was that this valiant warrior was already dead. He went to war on the 16th day of the second month of the year, 549. But today is the 13th. This means that he must still be alive. She didn't notice how evening came. Her maids were already looking for their mistress to prepare her for the ball. She must shine and be the best, because her position in society requires this. 
The maids knew their job perfectly, and within an hour Sophia was completely ready to go to the ball. Her sky-blue dress was amazing, and everything else was just as good. Annie just rolled her eyes. Her mistress was the most beautiful of all. She asked permission to stand in a corner in the ballroom and watch the mistress, and if she needs something, the maid will immediately help. Sophia understood that she would now be the center of attention, but she was absolutely ready for this. After all, she had already experienced this once, so she knew exactly how she would behave with certain people. As soon as the girl entered the hall, all eyes were immediately turned to her person. And this is understandable because she is used to being under the gun of prying eyes all the time, so she didn't even worry. They looked at her the same way before. After all, at that time, everyone in the royal castle expected that Sophia would become the bride of the future crown prince. She behaved like a real lady and was set as an example to other girls. But recently, in the views of the courtiers, one could increasingly read only hatred. Now she makes a completely different impression. It's even a little boring. That feeling is missing. Raymond appeared right in front of her. He broke into a fake smile and gave her some banal compliment about how beautiful the girl looked. She almost vomited from this perfect pretense. Of course, she assumed that the crown prince would arrive at the ball, but she did not expect that he would bump into her at the very beginning of the holiday. Previously, his words and smile brought her joy and pleasure. Now she knew exactly what his smile meant and that it did not convey an ounce of truth. This friendliness, interest, and slight flirting were a common mask. And since she was too naive, Raymond's plan worked perfectly. Raymond always maintained the image of a friendly person in front of potential brides, but he did this solely to maintain his reputation, and it worked. But this time, she played completely differently. She also feigned a smile at the young man and said that in comparison with him, she generally looked like a gray mouse or a pale moth. She made it clear to him that she was not going to melt at his words like the previous times, but he was also no slouch. He said that he needed to follow his bride, otherwise she would disappear or become a ghost. While other girls were dying of love for the prince, she openly hated him, and he is deeply mistaken if he thinks that he can behave with her as he pleases. This time, she won't allow it. If everyone knew that she and Raymond were engaged, then everything would look as if her house supported the second prince and his candidacy for the post of heir. Therefore, it would be foolish to reject it now. She should not arouse suspicion among society. After all, it was necessary to remember that if you underestimate someone, then later you will remain a fool. This is exactly what Sophia was like in the past. Let him consider her a naive fool at this stage of their relationship. This mask suits her very well now. This will make it easier for her to carry out her plan of revenge. For now, you just need to smile. And then a ringing female voice was heard. Sophia would not confuse him with anyone else, but not him. Samantha flew into the hall like a whirlwind. She was a mutual friend of Raymond and her, bright, eccentric, and always cheerful. This cruel traitor will have to smile now. How she hates her, but now is not the time to sort things out. You need to continue to play the role and be very vigilant so as not to screw up. She tried very hard not to punch the girl right in her pretty face and continued to smile. Then she asked why Samantha had just called Prince Raymond, and she made a surprised face. She was a bad actress. Samantha began to get out and said that before Sophia arrived, Mr. Raymond good-naturedly agreed to keep her company. Earlier, when she went out for a walk, she felt so lonely. The second prince also began to shield his accomplice. He said she actually looked very sad. This is the only reason why Raymond decided to accompany Samantha. By making such speeches, the second prince hoped to embarrass Sophia because she was hinting at an inappropriate relationship between him and Samantha. He said the same thing shortly before her elimination. At that time, she truly believed that there was nothing more than friendship between the two. How naive and trusting she was. Behind her back, these killers were carrying out a terrible plan, at the end of which Sophia's entire family would die. Suddenly, all the guests turned their attention to the arrival of the first prince. Some began to whisper that the son of a maid should not attend this kind of event. But the young man did not pay attention to this. Yes, Alexis Oakland entered the room, and he didn't care that everyone was talking about his appearance here behind his back. He was calm and confident. This is exactly what Sophia needed. The game starts today. 
Samantha and Raymond were not left behind. The girl made a face and said that how could people in military uniform be allowed to the ball? This is generally strange and unpleasant. This is where decent people have fun. Sophia appreciated the guy's impeccable appearance. She thought that for a soldier, a military uniform is a ceremonial costume. These clothes suit his status, and his outfit is simply gorgeous. The girl needed to talk to Alexis face to face. They have something to talk about. But we need to put these two traitors somewhere. It is necessary to avoid their attention because everything may not go according to her plan. But while Sophia was thinking, someone suddenly put a hand on her shoulder. It was Samantha. This snake saw that the girl was thinking, and her face was very serious, so she decided to ask if she was okay. The girl hardly managed to put on a smile. You can't think about bad things, otherwise she'll give herself away. She must control herself. She said that she was a little unwell and would like to be alone for a while, so the girl told these vile friends that she would go to the balcony to get some fresh air. This is a great reason to be alone. She needs a reason that won't arouse suspicion. They pretended so well that she didn't even think or realize that she was being so skillfully deceived. They did it just flawlessly, pretending to be her best friends. Why was she so stupid? She could not immediately recognize that there was something between these two people other than ordinary friendship. Before Sophia's death, Samantha made it clear that she was Raymond's lover. Then, while in a prison cell, she asked her vile friend why she was doing this to her. After all, her family didn't do anything wrong. On the contrary, her parents helped Raymond a lot. But in response, Samantha just laughed. What a pitiful sight to see this darling of society behind bars. She's right, her family is not guilty of anything, but that's life. Her father's influence was simply used. This lying creature simply laughed openly in her face, and there was not a drop of compassion in her eyes. She mocked the girl in the last minutes of her life and didn't regret it one bit, just like damn Raymond. Looking into Sophia's eyes, Samantha said that their plan was a success. They denigrated the girl's family and forged import- It's all damn envy. It was she who led to this end. Sophia decided to ask how long she and Raymond hid their secret relationship from her. She laughed again and said that they had been dating for a long time. The connection began long before- This is how the most common envy changes everything. But memories shouldn't get in the way now. The mind must be clear and cold to build a plan for- But they are so cunning and prudent that around her they behave like ordinary friends. They chat, joke a lot. There is so much rot in their hearts. They always saw her as a naive fool and nothing more. Although at this time, Alexis, who was still in the hall, the girl saw that she was losing her chance to talk to the first prince. We need to take advantage of this chance. Sophia said that she had a very important conversation and dragged the prince to the balcony. As long as there is no one there, they will be able to- When Alexis looked at her, she began to doubt whether this was the right person. But there was no turning back. The facial features seemed to be the same as many years ago. The guy finally asked what- The girl apologized. Everything happened quite spontaneously. Sophia introduced herself and said that she was the daughter of Duke Edelball. You can't pull. Someone could go out onto the balcony at any minute. So the girl said it straight, everything as it is. The prince should not participate in the planned war. Otherwise, he will not return from there. It turned out that this guy's character was completely different from the rest of the Imperial family. He was a real warrior. What could Sophia answer? He won't believe that she rose from the dead and returned to the past two years ago. She simply, as one would expect, the guy demanded some evidence. So that's all she has. The guy was slightly, Sophia said that she understood him perfectly. The girl tried to explain that he should still believe her words. After all, they it was clear that the young man was slightly confused. He understood that as a rival, therefore, Alexis decided to listen to the girl, and she said that she knew exactly what was going to happen in two years, and she is 100% sure that they are trying to frame Alexis. Otherwise, they would not have sent the heir to the throne to a cruel death. But the guy asked how she knew all this. She definitely shouldn't tell the guy how she knows the information, no one will believe her that she came from the past. That's why Sophia remembers very well the last conversation with this traitor. He was so pleased that he took the life of the- On that fateful evening when Raymond and Samantha decided to kill her, they did not hide the truth. She and the first prince were indeed obstacles to Raymond's rise to power. They were all- That damn son of a dirty maid beat Raymond every time, and this infuriated the traitor most of all. 
What if he did everything to remove a strong opponent from his path? After this scoundrel had connections everywhere, even in the war. Sophia recalled images from the past and could not believe only in the last minutes of her life, before the second prince was supposed to kill her, did she realize that and now the girl's main task is to convince the prince of her words. And the girl told the first prince that Raymond was going to arrange his death on the battlefield. It seemed that Alexis was not ready to hear such information. Sophia begged the first prince to listen to her words. She understood. Alexis thought it was stupid to ask such a thing, but he still asked the only question. Who on his team is the traitor? In response, he, the first prince's eyes flashed with rage. He was simply at a loss how a person with whom he had gone through so many wars, to whom he trusted absolutely everything, could turn out to be a traitor. This is complete nonsense. Sophia continued further to convince Alexis of the truth of her words. It turns out that Raymond is holding Barry's little sister hostage. Therefore, the man's hands are tied, and he follows all the orders of the crown prince to save the girl. Of course, this information changes everything completely. Lexis knew how Alexis seemed to begin to understand the gravity of the situation. He said that he would definitely save Barry's sister. Sophia fully supported his idea, and Alexis was silent for a moment, and then said that in order for them to trust each other, he wanted the girl to do something. If the guy saves his friend's sister, then he will understand that Sophia was telling the absolute truth, and then she will be able to gain his complete trust. And the prince collected his thoughts for a long time, and did not know how to voice his request. After a short pause, he said that he would like the girl to go with him in search of Barry's sister. In principle, this was completely logical. After all, if the girl refuses, then the prince may think that this is a trap. Alexis was far from a simpleton. He is not used to trusting the first person he meets. Espe Sophia understood perfectly well that in her situation there was nothing to lose. Alexis is a strong and reliable partner. On the other hand, Sophia understood that if she now went to save Barry's sister Jen, she would put herself in danger to avoid an engagement to Raymond and at the same time make Alexis crown prince. First, no matter how you look at it, you will... Since the man was a professional military man, he immediately assumed that the warehouse would probably be guarded by Raymond's subordinates. Going against them with your bare hands is very stupid. Sophia noticed that they did not have weapons and it was difficult to get them now, but Alexis showed her... The girl breathed a sigh of relief. With this man, you can go into battle and into reconnaissance. The young people set off immediately. They quietly left the palace. The road was long, and an uncomfortable silence began in the carriage. Sophia simply watched the young man. Raymond was also attractive, but Alexis's beauty was completely different. This young man was charismatic. Raymond was also a liar, and his smile was never real. Alexis didn't smile much at all. And because he was a military man, already in the morning we reached the distant warehouse. As Alexis said, the so Alexis took Sophia by the hand and dragged her deeper into the garden. He was sure that there was another way to get inside. Secret rooms always have two entrances. Now they must find the second one. The young people walked around the room from the other side. Indeed, there was another door, and a guard stood next to it. Now their main task is to get inside undetected and make sure that the girl is- But the young prince had a completely different opinion. He decided not to make any plans or strategies, but to simply go ahead. This principle always worked and gave the desired result. The guards did not suspect anything. Less than five minutes later, the guards were already lying on the ground and could not get up. That is why the army under the leadership of the first Prince Alexis always won any battle. And now it's clear why ordinary residents of the country love him so much. He, when the young people were convinced that there were no more Raymond's people in the farthest corner, they saw a silhouette. When we got closer, without wasting a second, Sophia ran up to the poor girl and asked if Barry Jen was her brother. The girl cried and said she was Amy, Barry's sister. Some people kidnapped her. Sophia began to untangle the ropes faster. Perhaps they have very little time. You need to run away from here as quickly as possible. To the young people arrived at the palace only in the morning. There was no sleep in the military wing yet. Barry met them and froze on the threshold, seeing his commander, and next to him, two girls, one of whom was his missing sister. The guy didn't see anything else because his eyes were clouded with tears. He rushed forward and hugged the girl tightly. She was crying too. She had to go. Barry fell to his knees. 
He was still crying, but out of gratitude and shame for trying to betray his superior. He has no forgiveness, but if it had... Alexis asked his friend to stop crying. They will... When the young people stepped aside, the first prince bowed to the girl and thanked her. Today he remained unharmed, and this is entirely her merit. So they need to... This meant only one thing. The guy began to believe in what Sophia was telling him. Therefore, she once again reminded that she was completely... The girl said that she acts on the principle that the enemy of my enemy is my friend. To realize her plan, young people need to get married. This will not cause condemnation in society, since they are both from influential families. Of course, the prince liked Sophia from the very... The girl tried to convince the young man. Marriage to her is the surest path to becoming the crown prince. The Edelbal family are... Her father is a well-known person in the country. And one word from him will be enough for the emperor to change his decision and appoint... Raymond understood that his brother, even dead, could cause him trouble. Then Sophia did not understand at all that her relationship with Raymond was not about love. There was no such feeling there at all. This was a cold... Having received the daughter of an influential duke as his wife, he acquired a long-desired title and, through deception, inherited the honorary right to ascend to the imperial throne as crown prince. With his final touch, Raymond slandered... Alexis thought a little. Well, let's say the girl man... But it was clear that the young duchess was more than determined. She said that she would never allow Raymond to become crown prince. She doesn't want to see him... Yes, she must get engaged to the second prince. But this has not happened yet, and there is still time to change everything. After all, after an engagement, it will be... Ex still, it was incomprehensible to Alexis why his brother's fiancé would carry out such a plan behind his back. And why... Yes, he showed courtesy, even pretended to be in love... But all this is just for the sake of obtaining the status of crown. Sophia never felt love for him. Perhaps a slight sympathy, because during meetings the prince was polite and very sweet. But, as it turned out later, Raymond betrayed her long before announcing their engagement. He is so cruel that he didn't even blink an eye. This is how things really are. This traitor will show his fangs yet, and she doesn't want to be used a second time. The first prince understood perfectly well that his brother was not at all suitable for the role of heir. But does Sophia really see in him, in Alexis, all those character traits that a crown prince should have? The girl replied that she was sure that he would be an excellent ruler in the future. The people will follow him, because people trust him. When he died in the war, the people of the country were in mourning for a long time. Sophia had no doubt that Alexis had already earned sufficient authority in society through his activity. But Alexis said that no matter how you look at it, an engagement to Raymond would be beneficial to Sophia's family. The first principal said that as a reward for victory in a difficult war, he would a Indeed, this should probably work. In such a situation, even the emperor would not be able to refuse Alexis. How smart he is, this first prince. The girl's spirits even lifted. Now she will not be alone in fighting against Raymond. It turns out that her ally is very resourceful, smart, and most importantly, brave. Since it was already quite late, the first principal ordered a carriage to be brought. Sophia's relatives are probably very worried, but Alexis had one last question. He asked the girl why she... Sophia answered immediately. She was sure that for Alexis, who was always in the shed, the guy looked the girl straight in the eyes once again. It turns out that girls from rich and influential families can be... Well, the girl objected. She said that all her past life she went with the flow. She trusted the opinions of others and never asked unnecessary questions. That is... But that was her past life. Perhaps higher powers are giving her another chance to change everything. Arriving home, Sophia decided to sit in the living room a little longer. She needed to reflect and so the Duke asked the butler to leave them alone with her daughter. They need to talk a little without witnesses. The man nodded, asked for- The father asked the girl to follow her, and she obe- It seemed that the Duke was not in the best mood. He asked why his daughter left. Now Sophia will have to get out and come up with a plausible. The Duke still frowned and reminded his daughter that she was engaged to His Highness Raymond. Well, Sophia was sure that her fiancé didn't care at all. After her disappearance, he immediately contacted his father. Nothing will be hidden from his eyes. Now or never. The girl decided to act. The Duke immediately sensed something was wrong. His daughter is acting strange. 
Sophia doesn't often ask him for something, so the conversation will probably... Sophia said the conversation was about her recent engagement to HRH Prince Raymond. She asks her father, It seemed to the Duke that he had not heard something, or that his daughter had simply gone crazy. How? But the girl was not going to back down. She's Raymond is a completely unsuitable candidate for the role of heir to the Empire. She is convinced behind the mask of good nature lies a completely different personality. The words of the second prince should not be trusted, nor should his action. In a sense, Duke Edelbal agreed with his daughter. He suspected that Sophia paused dramatically and then responded, It seemed that the father did not expect to hear this name from his daughter's lips. Why this person? He has a lot of enemies. His authority bothers a lot of people. Moreover, this guy does. Sophia decided to remind her father that Alexis fights for her country and does it very. So why is such a brave and responsible commander like Alexis Edelball thought about it? It turns out that his daughter is very insightful and smart. But on the other hand, an engagement to an aristocrat. Sophia quickly understood her father's thinking. The father nodded, but countered that Raymond. Sophia objected. It is true that his highness has no allies from the aristocracy. However, the man understood that first Prince Alexis valued humanity and justice. He is truly trustworthy. And Sophia also said that a couple of hours ago she was offended with His Highness Alexis. And if her father does not believe her, then she will bring witnesses. Deputy Alexis Barry, his sister, as Sophia decided to tell the truth, that she ran away from the ball in order to meet with Alexis and, together with His Highness, go to save the poor girl. Otherwise, I could have done. This situation seemed to shock the Duke. He asked if Sophia. Sophia asked for forgiveness again. But she managed to prove Duke Edelball was a very wise man. Therefore, he understood that if the family. Sophia really hoped that her father would have enough wisdom and make the right decision. The Duke thought for a moment. After some. The girl went out into the corridor. There was a satisfied smile on her face. She knew that her father would not let her down because he was personally interested in the happiness of his daughter. Even if Alexis had petitioned the emperor, presenting him with his... Of course, the duke, with a creaking heart, would allow her to marry Raymond. But being brought up among aristocrats, he always attaches great importance. Although the father is a very strict person, this time it must be difficult for him to forgive his daughter for not being engaged to Raymond. But as it turned out, he respects Sophia and her opinion. Apparently the Duke, having thought everything over well and in detail, will want to enter into it. The next morning, Ani knocked on her owner's room and said that they had sent her a letter. Raymond must already know that Barry's sister, Amy, was saved. Before the But there, his assistant and faithful friend was already waiting for him. Bear once again thanked the prince from the bottom of his heart for saving his sister. The man was very ashamed of his action. After all, they are more than friends, and Barry betrayed his boss but he could not do otherwise. The Alexis reassured the guy and said that he was not going to punish him for such an act. He un Bari fell to his knee and swore with his life that from now on he would serve Alexis faithfully. And it was Alexis who sent the letter to Sophia. He reported that he was leaving for the battle. It was very nice of the man. May luck. She again called her maid and said that she had a big requ Sophia leaned close to the maid's ear and told her that she and His Highness Prince Alexis were engaged. The maid's need. The girl should tell this information as if in secret and ask not to reveal it to anyone. This information has not yet been made public, but the maid overheard it. Sophia had confidence in the maid. This girl has never let her down, so this time... And Sophia's plan was that she had to find a spy who... This is only possible if someone from the Duke's house passes on the necessary information to Prince Raymond. By evening, Ayn ran into Sophia's room and reported that His Majesty Prince Raymond had arrived. Everything happened. Raymond settled in the living room and waited for his still bride. It the young duchess came out to the prince in all her beauty. She greeted the man, put on her youth... The prince could win the hypocrisy competition... He smiled widely and asked the girl not to behave so formally, because they are very- The girl decided not to put on a performance, so she immediately asked why the prince came to the duke's house. He replied that he had heard some unpleasant rumor. It turns out that Raymond heard out of the corner of his ear about Sophia's engagement to his brother Alexis. The girl, even in the mansion, no one found out anything in two days. This means that in- Sophia's face showed absolutely no emotion making it difficult for the prince to discern what she was thinking. But the girl asked. Ryman said that there was no more important news. But by Sophia smiled slightly. 
This means that Raymond's people who held Barry Sophia asked with a grin. Well, this worries Raymond, because they are soon to get engaged. The man cheered up, which means everything is going according to his plan, and soon the crown will appoint him Prince of the Empire. Well, the girl objected, now is a very difficult time. The war has begun. Getting engaged at this hour is not a good idea. It the prince had nothing more to do in the duke's house. He delicately said goodbye to his bride and went to the carriage. Sophia thus gained some time for herself. The young duchess only now realized that Raymond was very easy to deceive. He's stupid and naive and doesn't even stand. She was very sorry that her father was absent during the conversation with Raymond. After all, she was so close to revealing the truth. Well, it's okay. Let the deceiver enjoy ha Thanks to Raymond, the girl was still able to reveal the spy. According to the request, the headmaid Anya was told that at the party, first Prince Chef Jeff learned that Prince Alexis asked Sophia to meet in an informal setting. After all, they see each other so rarely, so it would- But Ani told the palace that the brave Prince Alexis saved her mistress from the hooligans who attacked her in the garden in the evening during the ball. And now, everything fell into place. The butler Lauren was a spy. He knows the Duke's house well. It was because of this man that Sophia's entire family was killed. Before her death, the Edelbal family was accused of committing a crime, and irrefutable evidence was found in the house in the form of documents that were not there before. This means that all this is the work of the butler Lauren. He is a vile traitor, and Sophia will never forgive him for this. She will definitely take revenge on this villain, and the revenge will be very cruel. But even though she knows the truth, more evidence is needed to accuse Lauren of The girl asked the Duke to call an expert to study handwriting, which caused bewilderment in the man. Why did his daughter need such a specialist, and whose handwriting does she want to study? There were a lot of papers on the Duke's desk, and the expert will have to find out whether they were all signed by Mr. Edelball's hand, or whether someone else did it. When the expert arrived at the office, the girl presented him with a bunch of One of the documents contained information that Duke Edelball organized uprisings in the territories of neighboring states. The man was shocked. These documents testified to terrible crimes. Someone snuck into the Duke's office and wanted to impersonate Sophia's father, and also planted these letters. And now the girl, with the help of an expert, offered to find out whose hands this was, after she said that she could guess who exactly forged her father's signatures. The handwriting in all the documents was very similar. By the way, it's all the expert asked Lauren to write a few lines and compared his handwriting with the handwriting on the Lauren fell to his knees and began to cry. He begged for forgiveness and said that money had simply gone to his head. He couldn't refuse. The temptation was too great. It seems that Sophia was no longer surprised by the butler. As expected, the butler said that the first Prince Raymond, by hook or by crook, it seemed that the Duke simply went berserk. He said that he would neither the money that Lauren received from Raymond for the work he did. After what happened, the Duke wanted to be alone for a while and put everything in order in his head. If he hadn't found out about the butler's betrayal, what would happen? If people knew the contents of the documents, there would be an uprising, and the Edelball family would have been executed. Finally, Sophia helped her father open his eyes and see the real situation. Whatever one may say, he trusted Raymond. But it turned out that he simply used the power and Sophia left secret papers. She thought that a handwriting expert might be able to decipher them. The man was proud of his daughter. Now he sees how wrong he was about the second prince. And now it will be easier to fight him, because his daughter- Even being in a soft bed, the, the girl's mourning didn't start with coffee. She heard a strange noise and screams in the living room and decided to immediately- Poor maid Anya stood on the threshold. She tried to close the door and not let anyone inside their house. But Sophia could not yet discern who this unwanted- The girl called out to the maid and asked what was happening. And then finally, she saw who was standing on the threshold. It was Samantha. And she from the very threshold, seeing Sophia, Samantha began screaming, It's probably too early to tell this bitch that Sophia already knows she's a traitor and they will no longer be friends as before. And there was no friend. Therefore, Sophia decided to put on a routine smile and pretend that everything was fine. He so the girl explained that the engagement would soon take place, and preparations for the holiday were in full swing in the house. 
So Samantha stood there and didn't know what to say. Yeah, then Sophia asked Samantha for forgiveness, but said that she had absolutely no time to talk with her friend. She is busy preparing for- The young duchess was always taught to be honest and not to lie. But this cannot be called a lie, because the engagement will still take place. Tr Samantha did not expect this turn of events. She is used to the fact that Sophia is always- The guest began to be indignant out loud. How is this possible? Can't her best friend find a moment to drink a cup of tea with her and tell her the latest news from her life? Sophia apologized again and said that she was really very busy some other time. She understood that it was Raymond who sent her to the Duke's house. The next moment, the girl asked the servant to take the guest out of the living room. She simply could not talk to this traitor anymore. She was Unsurprisingly, Samantha was shocked and didn't say another word. The behavior of the young duchess, Samantha had always managed to manipulate her friend in the past. And no matter how big today, Sophia behaved in a completely different way, which put Samantha in a state of stupor. Surely she wonders if the now Sophia was more than serious. She is no longer that little girl who trusts everyone. Having driven Samantha away, the girl decided to really get down to business and prepare for the engagement. The girl called her maid and asked her to find her a self-defense teacher. She hadn't seen the need for it before, but now, of course. The mistress's request greatly surprised the young maid. Who this decision did not come to the young duchess suddenly, when she everything was quiet in the imperial palace. It didn't take long to give, but when Samantha told how her best friend met her, Raymond became true. Samantha said irritably that she herself had no idea what had suddenly come over. But what kind of nonsense is this? He has known the duchess for many years. She could not do this to her friend Samantha. Raymond didn't understand at what point things started to get out of control. On the other hand, it is too early to draw such conclusions. Maybe Sophia... Every day at exactly midnight, Lauren contacted Raymond, but suddenly the messages stopped coming from him. The prince also did not receive a response to his messages to the butler. Samantha suggested being less interested in Lauren. Until they are absolutely sure that their plan has not The prince was also incredibly infuriated by the fact that someone saved Barry. He spent so much effort and money so that Alexis would not find out anything about Barry's sister. And Barry himself. For the first time, even Samantha didn't know how to calm the prince down. He was in real- The girl smiled and said that Raymond needed to take a break. Bes a few days later, the maid Anya brought a young man to the duke's house and introduced- What was Sophia's surprise when she saw in front of her not a huge knight, but a fragile- And she was also surprised when she realized that her mistress already knew her teacher. If only the poor maid knew under what circumstances her mistress had to meet Amy's teacher. She- The maid did everything in the best possible way. To find a self- Sophia was incredibly grateful to her maid- but she didn't always feel such nuances perfect. The self-defense teacher introduced herself. Her name is Amy Jean. She and in their country, girls are prohibited from having the status of- Perhaps Sophia doubts her knowledge after the incident when she was taken hostage. Sophia saw the girl only once and then she looked very exhausted. And this is not surprising because the girl asked the Duchess not to worry. She is a- In addition, the girl was aware of the whole situation and said that she- Amy also said that Alexis is the head of the royal- During lessons, teacher Amy was not so sweet and affectionate. Amy explained this by the fact that the enemies are also not asleep. It is- And the girl was 100% right. You need to be constantly on guard and not trust anyone. The young teacher understood perfectly well that she owed her life to this dear lady. Lessons with Amy were very difficult. Sophia did not succeed in many things, and the teacher concluded that even as a child, Duke Edelball wanted to teach her how to defend herself. But even then, but her teacher did not give up. Amy argued that e the young duchess understood that she needed to make every effort to learn how to- A few days later, Alexis received a letter from- Barry was happy for his friend. At first, he- Alexis was really very pleased. This girl is incredible. It was in those moments that Alexis realized that he missed Sophia. He told Barry that it was time to end- A few days later, while training, a maid appeared in the garden, out of breath. Sophia smiled and breathed out a sigh of relief. This time it was over very quickly- Last time this and perhaps the hostilities ended much faster, because this news of the end of the war quickly spread throughout the empire. The people rejoiced and praised Prince. On Sunday, the townspeople gathered in the main square of the capital to greet how handsome the first prince was. 
He sat relaxed in the saddle, and his face expressed absolute calm and self- In order not to attract unnecessary public attention, Sophia did not go out to the square to meet the- For the first time, Sophia wanted to look her best, because she would soon be dating Alex. The girls went into the closet and started choosing dresses. A holiday will soon begin in- And then the climactic moment came. The celebration began. Previously, Sophia chose her outfit for the holidays, so that it would fit perfectly with Samantha. Now there was no need for this. And it was clear that Samantha was sim- Her younger brother, Clifford, ran up to Sophia. He answered the girl with a bunch of compliments and asked her- The boy admired various stories about the war. So Prince Ale For some reason, Sophia remembered that last time Samantha and Raymond, the emperor, appeared in the hall, and everyone present fell silent and back. Next, his majesty asked the army commander, first Prince Alexis, to approach the imperial throne. He bowed calmly. Only now did Sophia manage to get a better look. The emperor congratulated Alexis on his victory in the next war. There was silence. Everyone wanted to hear Alexis's wish. At this moment, not only the duchess herself experienced shock. Everyone pressed. You should have seen Raymond's face. He was ready to hear anything but not such a request. The courtiers began to whisper loudly. Why is Alexis doing this? Doesn't he know? Th the emperor asked those present to be silent for a while and then asked, it seems that not a single muscle moved on Alexis's. In order not to spoil the situation, Sophia ran up to the emperor. She came even closer to the emperor and began to tell him that she could. The young people fell to their knees before the emperor as a sign of submission. At that same second, a loud cry and applause from those present rang through the hall. The only one who was not happy about this event was Raymond. His face was dist- Sophia also secretly looked at the traitor, and the result suited her. Sophia and Alexis bowed to the emperor once again and thanked his highness for the honor. Now, during this bustle, no one paid attention to Samantha, who stood to the side. She was also shocked by this news, but now she will help Raymond. There were still rumors circulating around the room that Sophia was sub He told his majesty that his daughter had long been in love with Prince Alexis. And the emperor calmed down. The influential duke put everything in its place. The emperor then said that the crown prince had not yet been chosen. All his children have the same right to this title. Raymond was incredibly angry that the emperor was talking so openly about the title of crown. Alexis thanked his majesty for the honor of having the opportunity to become crown prince. I always tried to give everyone what they deserved. However, now that this matter has been publicly resolved, the emperor can openly and Raymond began to panic and felt even more anger and hate. He could no longer tolerate the public shame and decided to leave the event. How long ago did this stupid girl reveal his plans? After all, she was never interested in government affairs. But it turned out that Raymond was deeply mistaken. Raymond pounded his fists against the wall in rage so hard that his hands bled. Samantha couldn't look at this calmly. The prince suggested that this upstart had changed radically. Most of all, Samantha did not want to be involved in this unpleasant and even public. When things had calmed down a bit, Sophia and Alexis decided to go out onto the balcony to have some alone time. The girl said that she Alexis smiled and said that the successful completion of the Sophia blushed and replied that she could not do otherwise. In just the prince smiled, and it was so beautiful and pleasant that the girl simply drowned in warm feelings. How lucky she was to get rid of the traitor Raymond, but the girl did not have to admire the prince's smile for long. He suddenly became yes, the fact that the Edelball family will support the prince the title of Crown Prince is not enough. Alexis will have to face many obstacles from the nobility. At first, fortunately, Alexis understood this very well, so he was ready to listen to the- It seems that, after the incident with the kidnapping of his friend's sister, the prince began to completely trust the- Fighting the system alone would be a stupid idea. Therefore, the girl- Alexis is supported by the common people, as well as the army. Duke Edelball- Whatever one may say, the games are very confusing and cruel. Therefore, Alexis, Alexon had no doubt that Sophia had already, firstly, an engagement to the Duke's daughter alone will not make Alex a crown prince. The young man will also need outside support. They will try to get, all sons of the emperor have the right to become an heir and receive the title of, so the first Prince Alexis, the son of the ruler's mistress, loses to Raymond in many ways. Even though the family of Sophia Edelball enjoys enormous influence in, an engagement to a girl from the ducal family gave Alexis a chance, just enough to get the title. But to keep him, you will have to make every effort. Secondly, Alexis lacks reliable and influential allies. Now, the only aristocracy on his side is the Edelball clan and the common people. But this is not enough. 
Therefore, the first thing young people must do is find like-minded people for Alexis. First, they need to reach out to those who would be happy to go against Raymond. Finally, Alexis understood what his younger brother had to do with it. In addition to the two of them, the Emperor has another son, Bruno Auckland, but he is always in the shadow of his older brothers. Prince Bruno led a rather modest and reclusive life. Therefore, the brothers communicated with each other very little. You could even say that they didn't get along for the most part. Raymond was very jealous of his brother Alexis, but only his origin played in his favor, and otherwise he endlessly lost to the second prince. That's why he plotted to kill him. Although Alexis does not communicate closely with her second brother Bruno, their relationship is still much warmer than with Raymond, and this needs to be emphasized. It would be nice to see him. If things were that bad, Bruno would not have investigated the death of Alexis in the war and the murder of the entire Edelball family, so you can contact him. Sophia I remembers how Raymond suddenly appeared outside her prison cell. He did not hide his joy. There was one less serious obstacle in his way. Then Sophia asked who the vile traitor killed this time. After all, her family and Alexis are not everything. Without hiding his joy, Raymond replied that it was his brother Bruno, and he absolutely did not care that Bruno was his younger brother. On his way to the status of crown prince, he eliminated absolutely all his opponents, and even his brothers. Unlike Alexis, Bruno had no intention of becoming crown prince. He was interested in completely different things. There was no need to kill him, but Raymond did it anyway. The traitor replied that as long as Bruno did not get involved in politics, he allowed him to live. But suddenly, Alexis's death seemed suspicious to his brother, and he began an investigation. This shouldn't have been done. Indeed, Bruno has always been distinguished by his sharp mind. The guy quickly realized that something was wrong in the death of the second prince, and began to understand the details. There are many inconsistencies in his death. And if this truth seeker had gotten to the truth, then Raymond would have been unable to avoid disgrace from the emperor, and even more so the title of crown prince. Therefore, there was only one way out, to eliminate Bruno. Even then, Sophia realized that this man was a real monster. He will even go over the corpses of his brothers to achieve his goal and receive the title of crown prince. But Raymond didn't care about Sophia's opinion. The next person this crazy person will kill will be her and his hand won't even tremble because the girl is an ordinary fool, a pawn in a big game. Since Alexis has already survived the war and remains intact, it is Bruno who needs to be saved next. Right now, the guy needs their help. Otherwise, irreparable things could happen. Alexis really didn't really understand how he could help his brother. He has neither influence nor huge support. But Sophia said that they needed to meet Bruno's mother. Arriving at the woman's estate in the evening, the young people saw that Bruno's mother was very sick. She was constantly in bed and required special care. But the woman was still very happy to see such guests. Even in illness, she looked attractive. She was the second princess of a neighboring kingdom. It was not clear whether the woman was receiving the necessary treatment or whether Raymond had tried here too and wanted to drive this woman out of the world. This should have been sorted out immediately. While they were talking with the princess, someone entered the room. It was Bruno. He brought flowers to his mother. It seemed that no one present expected to see the third prince here. It seemed that Bruno was not delighted with his brother's visit, and even with his girlfriend, or already his fiancée. But it was clear that his mother was glad to have guests. She was tired of lying in bed all alone. Bruno didn't trust them. He didn't trust anyone at all. That's the kind of person he was. He was not interested in palace intrigues. The guy was more worried about the health of his mother. Alexis said that since Bruno was absent from the ceremony, the prince decided to come in person and announce his engagement to Miss Sophia Edelball. In addition, they will be able to get to know each other better. Obviously, the princess was pleased with this news. She broke into a smile and congratulated the young people. They were a wonderful couple, both beautiful and very sweet, and the woman sincerely wished them happiness. It was clear from Bruno's behavior that he valued his mother very much. Therefore, in order to get the guy's support, you need to help the princess and put her on her feet. Bruno Auclan was the third prince of the empire and the son of the princess of the Middle Kingdom, Lee Riquel. The boy was radically different from his older brothers. They hardly remembered him as if he did not exist, and 
Probably not even all the inhabitants of the country knew that there were not two but three crown princes. Bruno just didn't like unnecessary attention and always avoided it. In order not to participate in the struggle for the throne and the title of crown prince, he deliberately led a reclusive lifestyle and tried not to attend social events, such as balls and receptions in the palace. His mother knew that her son was very talented. In addition, he is from a very influential royal family. He could easily gain favor with the aristocracy, but he didn't need it. If Sophia and Alexis manage to convince the guy to take their side, they will have a very reliable ally. He is not stupid and understands the situation. Besides, he doesn't need to lie. He likes honesty. When trouble happened to Alexis, the guy immediately had doubts about his death. He was not afraid to investigate this matter. Raymond has no power over Bruno, and this is his main trump card. After chatting a little more with the princess, the young people would like to talk with Bruno himself. The guy asked his mother to say goodbye to the guests, since she should not be overtired. The woman, of course, was against it. She wanted more communication. But the son assured that it would be better this way. Her condition has really improved, but she is still very weak, and it is harmful for a woman to overexert herself. The princess had to say goodbye to Alexis and Sophia. She was really a little tired, so she asked the young people to come at any time convenient for them. She is always happy to see them. When everyone left the sick woman's room, Bruno directly asked the guests about the real purpose of their visit. He highly doubted that they just wanted to check on his mother. It was clear that Bruno was far from a fool. He tried to look friendly in order to disappoint his mother, but now he is showing his true nature. Although he tries to look ordinary, he cannot be called that way. Sophia had no choice. She didn't want to seem suspicious, but there might not be another chance. So now she had to make the prince believe what she said. Sophia told Bruno that his mother has a maid who has worked for her longer than anyone else. This woman should be fired immediately, and the girl knows what she's talking about. The prince began to protest. He did not understand what the guest was saying. This maid has been working for them since their family arrived in the kingdom. He had never met a more devoted person, but the girl's next words made the man think. If he wants to save his mother and himself, he will immediately kick this woman out. Sophia said that she knows for sure that it is the maid who has been pouring toxic substances into the princess's food for a long time. They have a slow acting effect, which is why the prince's mother cannot recover. If he does not believe the girl, then he can secretly monitor the actions of the maid. Every evening she sings it with a decoction of herbs and pours poison into it. Bruno got nervous. This cannot be. His mother was examined by the best doctor in the empire and said that the woman had a rare incurable disease. Therefore, the princess's condition is simply maintained with the help of medications. Sophia could not call Bruno naive, but here he clearly missed the necessary information. The doctor has long been in cahoots with Raymond and his mother's maid. If the guy doesn't believe her now and doesn't take any action, then within six months his mother will die. But she will die not from illness, but from poisoning, if he doesn't listen to the girl now, then he will really regret it later and will be left without a loved one. So it's better to act now to save the life and health of the princess. And six months later, the maid, tormented by guilt, commits suicide, leaving only a note. In it, she will tell you that she was threatened and had no other choice. In the past, Raymond made a fuss, and no one knew about the contents of this note. The scoundrel simply destroyed her just as he destroyed the information that the death of Bruno's mother was his doing. When Sophia was in prison, Raymond was very bragging about her because he dealt not only with his brother Bruno, but also with his family. For unlike Alexis, his family is also very influential. The third prince listened to everything carefully. He had no reason not to trust the young people. But still, he warned that if their accusations are groundless, then they will not get off with a simple, it was a misunderstanding. Then Alexis said that if their joint plan failed, he would take full responsibility. He is not afraid of this and asks him to believe. No one has ever complained that he could cheat. This surprised both Bruno and Sophia, but they agreed. And Bruno suggested testing the theory of the young people, since they had already come so far. It seems he agreed to help them. But then Bruno asked, If everything turned out to be true, what would he owe to these guys? After all, in this world, no one does anything for anyone for nothing. The exception is two lovers. 
but this is not their option. Sophia, of course, was expecting this question from the man. He is a strategist and is used to looking to the future. Therefore, she replied immediately that Bruno would become their reliable ally and would receive their absolute support and protection. The prince has probably already heard some rumors. The thing is, Sophia really wants to make Alexis crown prince, but this lacks the support of influential people. Bruno said he heard about it. The prince could not come to the celebration in honor of the victory in the war, as he was caring for his mother. But he basically understands why Alexis needs this engagement. He also knows that Sophia has started taking self-defense lessons and thinks that this is a very good idea. This will not hurt the bride of the future crown prince because she must constantly beware of enemies. Wow, even Bruno is well aware of this. I wonder why he is following Sophia's life. Maybe he's just curious, but it's worth thinking about. This man is not as simple as he seems. His skills in obtaining information are simply amazing. Only thanks to this, in her past life, Sophia was able to figure out that Raymond was involved in the strange death of Alexis. Bruno is truly a unique person, and that's a fact. Even though he rejected the help of influential relatives on his mother's side, this does not at all reduce the benefits from their union. Sophia frankly said that her ducal family would support Alexis with absolutely everything. But His Highness will still be surrounded by numerous enemies, Therefore, they need someone they can trust unconditionally. Sophia made it clear to Bruno that they needed him to fight Raymond. With his intelligence and insight, they will be able to win these palace games. The prince understood that these people were not trying to deceive him at all. This is of no use to them. But what should he do? First of all, you need to test them for vodka. And only then can he say whether it is true or not. Now, he had nothing more to say to the guests. And he asked them to go back to the Imperial Palace. When he discovers a spy in his house, he will definitely inform them, and they will meet again. Alexis asked Sophia why she chose Bruno as her ally. The girl replied that he is the heir to the royal family of a neighboring state, and very influential people stand behind him. The connection between him and his family cannot be broken, even if you want to, and if he agrees to sleep as their ally, then it is quite possible that his family will support Alexis. Plus, he's very smart. Any detective would envy his insight. He is not a public figure and is always in the shadows. And Raymond is also afraid of him. Bruno is not mired in gossip and intrigues. He still hides his true potential. But the most important thing is that he is not going to take Raymond's side. Alexis looked at Sophia carefully. He had a logical question. Why is the girl so confident in what she is doing? She doesn't even have any doubts about her success. But the girl could not tell the truth that she had already seen the future. She was even there. She saw the death of her sister, his death in the war, and the murder of Bruno. So now everything needs to change. Alexis said that each of them has secrets. And he understands that Sophia also has a secret. But she doesn't have to tell him about them. He owes her his life. That is why he does not doubt her words and actions. The girls even felt a little awkward. By and large, she hides almost the whole truth from him, but she promised the man that someday she would definitely tell him everything. After arriving, Alexis accompanied Sophia to the carriage and sent her to her parents' house. Yes, it is full of mysteries, but it is very attractive. He might even like it. Still, Alexis hoped that fate itself had sent this girl to him. The man pulled out a precious pendant from his inner pocket. A sad smile appeared on his face. He remembered his mother. She was very kind and incredibly beautiful. It was not for nothing that the emperor himself fell in love with her, and then Alexis appeared. But then everything didn't go as it should have. All he has left of his beloved mother is just one pendant, and he kept it close to his heart. He will definitely keep his promise to his mother. He will not stray from his path, and she will be proud of him. Lately, governess Anya has always brought very good news. This morning was no exception. The girl brought a newspaper with news into the Duchess's bedroom. Sophia immediately began to read and opened her mouth in surprise. This can't be true. The press published an article that a maid tried to poison the wife of the king of a neighboring state. The criminal was caught by His Highness Alexis. Now the girl understood what Prince Bruno was talking about yesterday and what he meant. He said that he had to check the information about his mother's maid, and he would tell the result tomorrow. So, tomorrow has arrived. This was simply wonderful news. She did not doubt Bruno's insight for a second. 
Now Alexis's reputation must rise. Sophia did not expect anything less from the third prince. She again called Ani to her room and asked her to prepare a delightful outfit for her. She needs to visit someplace. She goes to the man who starts the right rumors. The girl picked up Alexis, and they went together to Bruno's family house. A few hours later, they were already there. It was necessary to discuss a plan for subsequent actions. It seemed that Bruno and his mother had been waiting for them for a long time. The guy sat by the woman's bed, as if on pins and needles, and his face, as always, was imperturbable. The woman was also excited. The sick princess still could not believe that her faithful maid Emma, who had served in their house for many years, turned out to be a vile traitor. How can you trust people after something like this? Bruno leaned sharply towards his mother. He understood that a woman should never worry. She is still very weak, so she requires absolute rest, and some news only throws her off balance. Sophia looked at the poor woman with a sad smile. To experience the betrayal of a person whom you trusted with absolutely everything, even the most intimate, is a big blow. She understands her perfectly. Quite recently, the girl herself faced a similar situation. I trusted my friend Samantha and shared with her absolutely all the facts from my life. She is very familiar with the feelings of the sick princess, but tears alone won't help my grief. Bruno has already called the doctor, and he examined his mother. Judging by the state of her body, the woman will finally return to normal as soon as the poison leaves her body. Bruno was also shocked by this situation. Okay, maid, but how could their family doctor be involved in such a scam? And how miraculously did Sophia find out about all this? The girl was expecting this question, because it is logical that this looks very suspicious on Bruno's part. But to avoid a direct answer, she said that her family's possibilities are almost limitless. The third prince seemed satisfied with this answer. The influence of the powerful Edelball family is truly limitless. They are a real information network, and it really helps. Sophia in turn asked where Bruno had taken the criminal. It cannot be given to the Imperial Police, otherwise they may ruin the whole matter. It's best to hide it for now. Bruno asked the girl not to consider him a fool. It is clear that he did not tell anyone anything. But that's it for now. He is waiting for the right opportunity. Then she will definitely be executed. Sophia assumed that this woman must have valuable information if she was collaborating with Raymond. But, as it turned out, the maid refused to talk, although she was caught in the act. If she refuses to tell the whole truth, then the person she is trying to protect is still alive. To make her talk, she will also have to save this person. Raymond must have already read the news in the newspaper, and he is definitely furious beyond belief. And if this is so, then there is a tiny chance that the boy he stole from the maid is still alive. Sophia couldn't miss the opportunity to talk to the traitorous maid. She asked Bruno for permission to see the woman. Perhaps she will be able to at least find out something from her. Bruno didn't mind, but decided to go down to the dungeon with Sophia and eavesdrop on their conversation with the maid. Not because he trusted me as a girl, he was just interested. Sophia asked the woman not to worry because she was completely safe. Those who threaten her loved ones do not know where she is and whether she chewed at all. Sophia walked straight up to the maid and looked into her eyes. Then she said that the woman could tell her the whole truth. She is not an enemy and wants to help her, so that she, in turn, will also provide a service to them. The woman burst into tears and said that her son had been kidnapped. In order for her child to be returned to her, she had to add poison to her mistress's food every day. That's the whole secret. But if she tells anyone about this, her son will die. The girl heard Alexis's jaws creaking with anger, and Bruno's face changed. Everyone understood very well whose dirty hands this was. This is Raymond's favorite tactic. Everyone understood that not a second could be lost. Sophia promised to save the maid's son, but in return, she must promise that she will testify in court against Raymond. The poor woman cried and thanked the girl. It was very embarrassing. For many years, she served her mistress faithfully. And if her son had not been kidnapped, this would have continued. But the woman was told that it was too early to thank the young people. We need to act very quickly before Raymond and his vile allies notice anything. We need to save the child. Suddenly, a strange whistle was heard, as if an arrow was flying, and Alexis was not mistaken. It was a spear. He managed to grab Sophia with lightning speed and throw her aside. He managed to save Sophia. The spear whizzed right over their heads. 
But, to the great regret of everyone present, they were unable to save the maid. The weapon hit her right in the chest and pierced through her body. How? How did it happen? Why? The woman is dead and it is no longer possible to save her. Or maybe they weren't aiming at Emma at all, but at Sophia. The important thing is that the enemies are not asleep and are watching them in order to hide the truth. Sophia screamed for the door to be opened quickly. This woman must be saved. She must tell where her child is. Otherwise, they will not be able to save the boy, just as they could not protect his mother. While Emma still had the strength to speak, she said that her son was being held in a tower on the edge of the city. There is a dungeon there, and she came there to make sure that the boy was there and still alive. The woman couldn't say anything more. She simply begged to save her son and take care of him. These were her last words, after which her heart stopped beating. Vile coward and traitor Raymond. He must pay for his actions, and Sophia, along with the princes, will ensure that he receives the harshest punishment. This is what she promises. Don't let him think that he intimidated Alexis and his team. He's gloating now, but that won't last long. We need to hurry to the outskirts of the city so that this freak does not have time to deal with the boy. Alexis reminded that there was not a minute to waste. Emma can no longer be helped, but her son is still in danger, and only they can save him. Therefore, we need to hurry before Raymond gets ahead of them. How she hated that bastard Raymond. He is a real monster since he did not spare the mother of a small child, and he keeps the boy himself in a dungeon. He will do any murder for the sake of a goal. Bruno remembered that their maid had married a man from a neighboring town several years ago. That's right. They had a child, a boy about ten years old. He sometimes came with Emma to their estate. And Bruno also remembered that this woman's husband had suffered some unknown decline right before her eyes, and she had only her only son left, whom she loved madly. The man's killers were never found. Of course, it couldn't be otherwise. This crazy guy leaves no traces. If Raymond didn't lie to her in that prison cell, then to intimidate Emma, he did it to her husband. He showed this woman that he was not going to joke at all, and so that the woman believes that he will stop at nothing. Killing a child will not be difficult for him. Bruno was smart but callous. He asked why they should save the child of a criminal. What benefit will this have for them? They don't even know him, and he's only seen him a couple of times. Such words simply drove Sophia crazy. She shouted that the child was not to blame for anything. And they will not be the same in humans as Raymond, so they will pull the boy out of the dungeon. Alexis supported the girl. He also believed that Emma had paid enough for her action. Now we need to take care of the child. He was left without both parents. The prince realized that he had said nonsense. Now they will think he is a cruel monster. Therefore, he apologized and said that he was not at all against releasing the boy from captivity. Of course he's in business. They won't just save an innocent soul. This boy will be a valuable witness when they prove Raymond guilty. But the killer must not know that the boy was saved. At the right moment, they will ask the boy to tell how Raymond forced his mother to add poison to the princess's food, and then the whole truth about his outrages will come out. Higher powers gave her a chance to live the last two years again, and this is not just like that. She must correct her mistakes and ensure that the title of crown prince is taken by the right and worthy person. By evening, the young people reached the outskirts of the city. The tower could not be confused with another building, so they drove as close to it as they could. There were guards there. Sophia had the bitter experience of being rescued from Amy's captivity. Then she was simply useless, because she could neither attack nor defend herself. This time, everything will be different. Having deceived and eliminated the guards, the young people carefully opened the door to the inside of the tower. It was dark there. But when the eyes adjusted and it was possible to see at least something, it turned out that it was empty inside. It was an ordinary bar, but it seemed that this was a simple cover to hide something important from prying eyes, something that no one should see. And Raymond tried. He's not a fool. They found nothing, although they searched everything to the last corner. But suddenly Alexis remembered that before her death, Emma said that there was a secret dungeon in the room. The boy is there. It's good that Bruno went with them. He walked around the room a little more and then moved the barrels near the buffet. Behind them was a secret door. This guy was a real detective. The young people were very happy. 
Alexis and Sophia probably couldn't have done it without him. Having opened the secret door, they saw a staircase that led down. There was a dungeon there. Sophia was once again convinced that the prince was smart as hell, but he hides it very well and pretends to be an ordinary, extraordinary guy. But one can only envy his mental abilities. It was so dark in the dungeon that Sophia couldn't even see her hands, but they heard some sounds and movement in the corner. Looking closely, the young people saw a small silhouette. The girl immediately rushed to the side where the child was lying. But she immediately stopped because something sharp was put to her throat. It was a knife. Someone else was here besides the boy. The girl was seriously scared, but she didn't show it and decided not to twitch. Her life will still be useful to her. The stranger ordered the men to throw their weapons on the ground and move away. Then someone lit a torch, and it became clear that the stranger was not alone here. There's a whole group of killers here. They surrounded the young people. This time, Raymond was much better prepared. Alexis suggested that they leave on good terms, otherwise they would have to fight, which he does very well. But the strangers were also well prepared. It's nothing personal, they're just doing their job. Even the genius Bruno could not guess that it was all a setup. They were simply lured into a trap. The strangers confirmed this and laughed. Their plan worked perfectly. Sophia was the most upset. She believed that everything happened because of her. Without thinking, she rushed down the stairs to quickly save the boy. In the first minutes, she thought that she had again become a burden to the guys. But then I remembered the words of my self-defense teacher. You can never give up. She knows defense techniques. She gathered all her strength and remembered what Amy had taught her for a whole month. Then the girl turned sharply and slammed her heel into the invader's leg with all her might. Nobody expected this. Amy taught that it is impossible to defeat a woman by force. Therefore, you should rely on speed and the effect of surprise. And this meant that Sophia had to disorient the enemy. She twisted her free arm and hit the guy in the solar plexus with her elbow as hard as she could. He didn't think the girl was capable of this, so he didn't expect such a turn. The next second, Sophia delivered a crushing blow to the killer's jaw. He fell to the ground and seemed to be no longer breathing. It looked very impressive, so everyone just stood and watched. Alexis was the first to emerge from his stupor. He ran up to the girl and said that he was proud of her success. Yes, she didn't expect this from herself. It turns out that the lessons with Amy were not in vain. And then, everyone turned their attention to Bruno and a bunch of killers who were already lying on the ground. The third prince said that you can calm down. He has already done everything. He just killed all these idiots. None of those present even thought that such a person as Bruno could handle a sword. Today, he surprised everyone. The guy himself said that he is still far from a professional, but he can do something. Sophia just opened her mouth in surprise. Yes, indeed, talented people are talented in everything. But the guy replied that he preferred to use his head instead of swinging his sword in all directions. Here, a small silhouette appeared from behind the barrels. Then, a minute later, a small, exhausted boy came out to those present. He was so scared that he couldn't even talk. Sophia ran up to him and wanted to hug him. She told the child that there was no need to be afraid of them. They had come to save him and would not harm him. But the first thing the boy said was that he wanted to go to his mother. There was a terrible pause and it seemed like it lasted forever. The girl spoke first. She said that they would talk about mom a little later. First he has to tell them a lot. For starters, what's his name? The child said his name was Leo. We couldn't hear anything more from him as the child lost consciousness. Fortunately, the girl managed to catch him. These non-humans must have starved him. For this killer Raymond, this little guy was just one of his pawns. The boy meant nothing to him. He locked the child in the basement and did not even bother to leave him any food. It was no longer worth staying in the tower basement. Raymond's accomplices could come here, and then things would be bad for them. It was urgent to leave and bring the boy to his senses. Alexis's face changed noticeably. All these troubles happen because of him. Everyone wants to help him, but it doesn't work out very well. People start dying and it becomes dangerous. The team decided that Emma's baby should be left at the Duke of Elobel's estate. He will be much safer there than in Prince Bruno's house. Besides, no one knows who saved him. It was late at night when the young people reached Sophia's house. The boy came to his senses and was sleeping peacefully in Alexis's arms. 
It was necessary to put him to bed, and the girl called her maid. But it turned out that Ani came running not just like that, but with news. It turns out that Sophia's friend, Mrs. Samantha, was adopted by the Ducal House of Boldega, and now she will become an influential person in society. How can this be? From today, she officially became part of this famous family empire, and the news quickly spread throughout the state. And the girl handed an envelope to her mistress and said that some stranger had brought a letter to their house and asked her to give it to Sophia. But Ani suspects that it was a messenger from Samantha. Indeed, this letter was written to her by her ex-friend Samantha, who turned out to be a traitor. She reported that she was adopted, and she also became the bride of His Highness Raymond. But that is not all. It turns out that in honor of the engagement, they are throwing a big celebration. There will be many influential people. Of course, Samantha would like Sophia to come too. How so? They outwitted Alexis and her, fooled her like fools. This means that the traitors somehow found out about Sophia's plans. It follows that someone is telling them information. To gain reliable support in society, they managed to introduce Samantha into the ducal family. The Boldega family is second only to the Edelbal ducal family in terms of influence in the camp. They pulled off a big scam. They lured Alexis and Sophia out of the city and thereby bought themselves enough time to arrange everything. They managed to place Samantha in the ducal family. Sophia knew that Raymond and his mistress were dreaming of how to furnish the Edelbal family, so they gladly seized the opportunity to make Samantha a duchess. She was left a fool. Until now, the Boldega family could not compete with her family. However, her father openly sided with Alexis, the son of a simple servant. And now everything is not so simple. Samantha joined the Boldega family and also became Raymond's fiancé. And this is bad because she will gain even more influence among the aristocrats of the country. And this will make things more difficult for Sophia. Bruno studied the letter carefully. Samantha wrote about the date and time. The celebrations are to take place in the evening at the Imperial Castle. This means they want to kill two birds with one stone. Sophia and Raymond do not expect to appear at this festival of lies and deceit. But Sophia will surprise them. She will come, and not alone, but will take Alexis and Bruno with her. A grand celebration was indeed organized in the Imperial Palace. It was a real celebration of hypocrisy. Raymond and Samantha feigned smiles, sensing their near victory. All the guests listened to the pretend speech of the first prince, who announced that today they had gathered to break the news that he and Samantha had become engaged today and would soon get married. Sophia watched this from afar and understood that the actors from these traitors were like themselves. All they need is to gain more influence from well-known families in society. Raymond also happily announced that from now on, his bride is part of the Boldega family and becomes an integral part of it. In other words, their influence in society will become much stronger. Raymond simply drowned in the attention that was far-fetched. He said that he would never give up the fight for the title of crown prince and asks everyone present to support him. But at that moment, Alexis raised his hand up and thereby attracted the attention of those present. He said that in this fight for the title, the best must win. And this is definitely not Raymond. As Sophia thought, no one expected them to show up for this holiday. But Samantha pulled herself together and approached the young duchess. She forced a smile and greeted her friend. Samantha feignedly asked for forgiveness, saying that she was afraid to admit to her friend that she had feelings for Raymond for a long time. But she didn't want to do this and ruin their connection. So she was silent. But Sophia decided to play along. Now she will smile and make a fool of herself. But she will never forgive her for her betrayal and for messing with Raymond behind her back. Sophia said that she was very happy for her friend, and that she had known for a long time that Samantha and Raymond were secretly in love with each other. Therefore, she wishes happiness to her friend and the first prince. She didn't regret leaving Raymond one bit. This is a vile and very cruel person. Samantha will have to find out, but it will be too late. He will easily kill her too if necessary for the title. She doesn't even need a man who so easily betrays loved ones and plays with their lives for his own vile interests. She never loved him, and now she sincerely hates him. Sophia hugged Alexis and said that everything had fallen into place, and each of them had found their true love, and they were happy. 
she too is now the bride of such a wonderful and respected prince. Thus, having played to the public, Sophia found herself in an advantageous situation. She, it seems, stepped over herself for the sake of her friend's happiness and gave her her fiancé. Let Samantha burst with anger. These people will stop at nothing. They did not even hesitate to kill so many people in order to achieve their goal and gain the status of crown prince for Raymond. She will do everything to ensure that Alexis ascends the throne. They cannot allow a murderer and traitor to rule their empire. The ruler must be an honest and courageous person who will protect its inhabitants. Here Bruno entered the conversation. He said that why only Raymond and Samantha are involved in games. They are also a good team, and it's time for them to play a little and get on the enemy's nerves. The Duke of Boldega also smiled meanly. He hated the Edelball family, so he was happy about this state of affairs. This will benefit him, and his family will become closer to the Emperor and power. That smile was just as disgusting. She will not forgive or forget how he gave false testimony against her family, accusing Duke Edelball of organizing a coup in the country. She remembers very well how he lied in court, saying that some suspicious people constantly came to the Edelball's estate, and they did not look like law-abiding citizens. And the worst thing then was that the court believed this scoundrel, and her honest father was accused of all the sins of humanity. And then they brutally, and without remorse, killed his entire family, including the servants. When Duke Edelball made excuses and assured that he had done nothing of the kind, the vile Boldega showed the court forged documents that indicated that her father was a criminal, and these documents were signed by the Duke. Her beloved and completely honest father was accused of terrible things, such as the slave trade, organizing riots, and other terrible atrocities that could not even be imagined. It was then that in court Boldega approached the Duke and said that such a person should be punished to the fullest extent of the law, and his place would be taken by a worthy person, and it would be him. The court did not listen to Duke Edelball. Also, the testimonies of townspeople were not taken into account. Her father was found guilty of terrible things, and the bribed judge did not want to listen to any more evidence. Then her vile friend forced Sophia to watch as her father was publicly branded and accused of things he did not do. This was much beyond her strength. The Duke was recognized as a traitor, then Sophia realized how easy it is to lose everything if your enemies decide to destroy your family. They openly mocked and rejoiced at how easily other people's lives could be ruined with just one click. Samantha wasn't kidding. She said that for now they would deal with Duke Edelball, but then it will be her turn. She will try to ensure that her friend dies in mortal pain. Alexis pulled her out of her sad thoughts. He saw that the girl was upset because of some memories, so he decided to ask what was happening and if the girl was okay. Now is not the time to be sad. He carefully took the girl by the hand and said that she should not worry about these freaks. Since she is given a second chance to change everything, she will do it, and he will help and support her in everything. The girl felt so calm in her soul, but she broke the peace again, and this time it was Bruno. He asked the lovers to leave their personal world and return to reality there is one little thing. The young people were embarrassed. Is it really so obvious from the outside that they are simply drawn to each other, and when they are close, the world becomes a little more beautiful and kinder? But there is nothing to do. There are urgent matters. In addition to the fact that Bruno was smart and knew how to handle weapons, it turned out that he also had an excellent sense of humor. He asked the lovebirds not to be shy. They were engaged after all, so they had the right. Bruno decided to take his leave, but he said that he had an urgent matter. He could not tell all the information about what it was yet, but in the end result, they would all be pleasantly surprised. Alexis and Sophia were already surprised. They thanked all higher powers for having met this man. There was no doubt that this time the young man would come up with something interesting. Lately, every morning began with Ani bringing some news, and now this news was not always good, the girl again handed the Duchess the morning newspaper. Judging by the appearance of her maid, the news was indeed not very good. Sophia picked up the newspaper and, to be honest, was already afraid to read what had happened again and what they would have to get out of again. But still, you will have to read it. But, to the girl's great and pleasant surprise, the news was wonderful. This is what Bruno meant when he said that he had one urgent matter.
Before the young duchess had time to enjoy the news, Annie ran into the room again. But she was not alone. Alexis and Bruno stood behind her. The guys seemed to be in a great mood. Bruno said hello and said that he no longer wanted them to come to visit him, so he decided to get out to the capital and visit his friends. Of course, he did not warn about the visit. The girl joked that she had not invited anyone to visit so early, but in fact, she was incredibly happy to see the guys, each in their own way. She was especially happy about the appearance of Alexis in her house. The guys came to discuss today's news in the newspaper, namely an article that the neighboring kingdom of Lyrikel stated that it would support His Highness Prince Alexis. Bruno's mother took care of this. The third prince smiled and said that it was not difficult at all. His mother fell in love with Sophia and Alexis, as if they were her own children, so she is ready to provide them with any help. The guy said it wasn't his style to make that kind of mistake. He was not happy with how his mother was treated in the empire, and he decided not to give up and wait for one of the princes to take the throne. Then he would return to his native kingdom. He assessed his prospects in the event of victory of one of the brothers in the struggle for the imperial throne, and this smart guy has already developed a whole plan— Bruno said that he and his mother would support Alexis as long as necessary, and he would not leave the empire until his brother's victory. But there is one condition. After Alexis becomes crown prince, he wants to become prime minister. Therefore, it turned out that Bruno has his own interests in this fight, but they do not interfere with their plans. On the contrary, the young people were happy about this news. The third prince was an excellent candidate, but there was one but. Although Bruno's mother agreed to support Alexis, it will be a little difficult. After all, the princess is a representative of a neighboring state, so she will not be able to play openly. No matter how things are, they are still going uphill. They are now as powerful as Raymond and have equal support from powerful families. With Lyrical's support, they have a chance to fight on. How grateful Sophia was to Bruno and his mother for everything they did for her and Alexis. The truth will finally prevail, and they will bring this bastard and murderer Raymond to clean water. But Bruno did not expect praise from anyone. He simply always loved honest people and stood for justice. Therefore, I decided to help my older brother obtain the status of crown prince of the empire. Raymond got rid of his younger brother because he found out the truth about how the Edelball family died, as well as his older brother Alexis. And also... Probably this scoundrel was simply afraid of Bruno. Having discussed all the details and making sure that their opponents did not have the opportunity to come up with a countermove so quickly, Bruno decided to bow out. He wants to visit his mother and spend some time with her. The third prince winked at the lovebirds and said that he was giving them a great opportunity to be a little alone with each other. After all, don't forget that they are engaged. Let them discuss the wedding. And it is true. Lately, Sophia and Alexis have been doing nothing but trying to get Raymond out, but we didn't really talk about them and their future plans. Alexis was especially handsome today. As always, he was silent more than he spoke. But the girl was fine with it. She didn't like talkative people, and she felt safe next to this guy. It seems she was stuck on him because the guy asked if she was okay because she was looking at him and was silent. Sophia apologized, and shyly asked if Alexis wanted to take a walk in the garden. Of course he wanted. It's fashionable to say that he even dreamed of such a moment. Finally, they will be able to be alone, learn something about each other, and communicate. After all, they have a wedding soon, if anything. They went to the rose alley in the garden. It really was wonderful there. But it seemed that the young people felt slight discomfort— their conversation did not go well and they were embarrassed by each other. The girl decided to break the silence and asked if the prince remembered their first meeting. They were still children. Her father took her with him to the imperial palace, but she was bored listening to government conversations and she ran off to wander around the territory. So she climbed into the garden and then got lost among the flower alleys. At first, she was afraid that they wouldn't find her at all. And then Sophia met a boy who was also wandering among the rose bushes. The boy was incredibly handsome, but he looked so that she would never have thought that in front of her was a prince, the son of an emperor. He said hello and said that he was picking a beautiful bouquet here for his mother. Alexis stopped and smiled slightly. Then he said that he remembered this moment very well and was very sorry that they met so late. He didn't have the right moment to tell it. 
It's so strange that so many years have passed, but history seems to be repeating itself. They are again walking among the rose bushes, but only now in the status of bride and groom. It seems that life is slowly getting better. Suddenly the guy became sad. It seemed that he remembered something unpleasant. And the girl asked what happened. Alexis said that in those days it was difficult for him to be in the imperial palace. The girl asked for forgiveness. She understood perfectly well how the emperor's illegitimate son was treated in the palace. His mother was a simple servant, so the boy was constantly mocked. He was a real outcast and was constantly bullied by Raymond's people. And he was about nine years old then. And the girl couldn't figure out how the guy managed to withstand all this. Sophia thought that the guy was so strong, because circumstances had tempered him since childhood. But this prevents him from enjoying simple things and pleasant moments. He is so young, but he smiles very rarely. This is what people do who were not loved in childhood. We need to somehow help him and make his life a little more fun. And the girl will definitely do this. Suddenly, Sophia asked why Alexis decided to become the crown prince. They never talked about it. At first, she thought it was because of how he was treated as a child. But there was another reason. It was not just a whim, a desire to show all these pompous people that he also meant something and could do something. There is some secret behind this that Sophia should find out. It seemed that the guy had been waiting for this question for a long time because he answered immediately. He said it was all just because of his mother. He promised that he would take revenge no matter what. He and his mother lived in a foggy palace. It so happened that inconvenient members of the imperial family were sent there to live. It was a very harsh region. Terrible cold inside, and the same inside the castle. Because of this cold, Alexis's mother was often sick and her health was very weak. The guy always worried about her and tried not to upset her over trifles. He has been accustomed to being strong since childhood. The guy's mother was a very bright and kind woman. She was not worried that she was sent far from the capital. She had her greatest treasure, her son, and he was nearby, so he warmed me even in this cold region. The boy made sure that the woman did not get hypothermic, because she really loved to walk outside and watch the snow fall. That's why Alexis always brought her a warm scarf and wrapped her up. They were not sent any money. There were almost no servants, so the castle was in a deplorable state. Mother and son even had to save food and firewood in order to survive longer. Alexis made sure that his mother was always warm, so when the fire was not lit, he wrapped her in warm blankets. She hugged him and told him fairy tales and interesting stories. Maybe because the guy felt responsible from a very early age, he was always serious and smiled little. It seems he didn't even know how to joke, and he didn't particularly like to do it. All the emperor's children, official and illegitimate, received the same education. It was the law of the land. Therefore, Alexis came to the imperial palace during his studies. The boy had to be in the same class with his two brothers. Since they were still small, Alexis did not feel much hatred from either Raymond or Bruno. But then things got worse. Alexis performed well and studied much better than Raymond, and this infuriated the latter terribly. He began to mock the boy and played all sorts of dirty tricks on him. The mother was the only person who knew how hard it was for her son. But he is so strong that he will endure all the mockery, and when he grows up, he will prove that he is worthy of becoming the heir to the throne. As a child, Alexis didn't understand why Raymond hated him so much. After all, he is the legitimate son of the emperor, lives in the palace, and has absolutely everything. He is not his competition. He has a lot of servants who fulfill every request. He eats the best food and sleeps in a warm bed. He doesn't have to think about how to get through the next day, unlike Alexis. Those with royal blood have equal rights to the throne. But Alexis did not have such a privilege because his mother was a commoner, so he was treated as if he was superfluous. But Alexis's mother always told him that it's not just bloodline that plays a role in the struggle for the throne. It is important to be a good person, have merit to the state and love your people. And the boy understood that his life was only in his hands, so he studied diligently and then connected his life with military affairs and achieved significant success. Moreover, everyone in the country loved him. Raymond achieved absolutely nothing. He still lived in the Imperial Palace, and his anger towards the whole world was constantly growing. He hated Alexis with all his soul. The mother was very hurt and upset for her child, 
And what was even more painful was the fact that she could not help him in any way. She was just there, suffered and loved him with all her heart. The emperor turned out to be a weak man and a bad father. He pretended not to notice anything. He sent Bruno to the kingdom to his mother, sent Alexis to the northern castle, and kept only Raymond with him. He always remained in the shadows. That's why the boy never smiled. He wasn't having fun. Never. He was hurt and offended for himself, for his mother, and he wanted to restore justice. When any holiday was held in the Imperial Palace, only Alexis was invited and mother was forgotten, or they didn't want to see, and the boy was always alone in such situations. Every such reception in the palace seemed like real torture to Alexis, but he, gritting his teeth, came and endured the contemptuous glances of those around him and the hateful gaze of his brother Raymond. One day the guy was invited to a ball on the occasion of the birthday of the Empress, Raymond's mother, and Mom sewed a suit for Alexis with her own hands. He was simply irresistible in it. But Raymond, when he saw Alexis in such a delightful outfit, was very jealous, because he, being the first prince, could never look so beautiful and attractive. So he sent his brother away. But even this was not enough for the vile and pathetic prince, he found a bucket of dirty water and poured the entire contents on his brother. Thus, he solved the problem and there will be no one more beautiful than him at the holiday. Having said that the son of a commoner should not even interfere with this kind of event. His place, at best, is in the stables. Let him go there. There's nothing to do here. Since the guy couldn't go inside the imperial palace in this form, he decided to take a walk in the garden. There were many flowers there. There are no flowers in the foggy palace, it's cold there. Therefore, he will collect a bouquet for his mother. It was then that he saw a beautiful girl. She was also walking in the garden, but seemed a little scared. Alexis had never seen her here before. And the girl, seeing the guy, froze in surprise. The girl was surprised that the boy was covered in dirt. His beautiful suit was all dirty. It seemed as if he had taken a swim in a swamp. But there wasn't even a puddle here. What happened to him? Then it became clear that someone had cruelly mocked the guy. She pulled out a handkerchief and began to dry the stranger. But he stood there like a pillar and didn't know how to behave in such a situation. When she cleaned the boy a little of the dirt, it turned out that he was incredibly beautiful, but very sad. His eyes seemed to never see joy, and his lips never broke into a smile. The girl then frankly said right to his eyes that he was very handsome. She had never seen such beautiful blue eyes before. But the boy looked in the mirror every day, but never thought about his beauty. And Sophia also said then that she saw the first Prince Raymond, but his beauty could never compare with the beauty of this beautiful stranger. And the boy remembered this phrase forever. Nobody said such words to him. He was considered a second-class man, the son of a dirty commoner. According to Raymond, the guy had no right to appear in the Imperial Palace at all. The girl asked what his name was, and when I heard that his name was Alexis, I realized that this was the illegitimate Imperial son, and I was very surprised by this. Why is the boy looking like this? She asked why the guy was not at the ball but wandering among the flowers. He replied that everyone was avoiding him because he was not a pure-blood heir. His mother is an ordinary servant, so her attitude towards him is completely different. What she heard outraged Sophia. How can you humiliate a child simply because his mother is not of royal blood? She is sure that the boy is much better in everything than the first Prince Raymond. The girl said that you should not give up under any circumstances. That's what her father teaches her. But the boy replied that he would not return to the palace. He would rather collect the most beautiful bouquet for his mother. Sophia said that she came here with her dad, Duke Edelbal. The emperor is having a reception, but she is bored inside. She does not understand these conversations, so she ran into the garden to admire the flowers. The girl said that she also used to think that she would become the heiress of the family. But something happened that changed everything. Her parents had a son, her younger brother, and now he will be the heir. The boy said that even though he is the son of the emperor, Alexis will never be able to become the heir and receive the title of crown prince, because there is Prince Raymond. And no matter how hard Alexis tries, nothing will work. He said that his mother was very worried about this situation. It pains her to watch her child being bullied. 
but her status does not allow anything to change in this situation. The woman tried to explain that he was no worse than his brother. On the contrary, he is smart, tries to succeed in his studies, and is engaged in military bearing. Soon the Empire will see that he is worthy to be the heir. For the sake of his mother, he is ready to further develop and become better, so that she smiles more often and is proud of her son. This is his dream, to become crown prince and prove to everyone that he is the best. On that distant day, the girl said that she was sure that Alexis would become the emperor of their country in the future. He deserves it, that's already clear. She knows Nasty Raymond and knows what she's talking about. Then Alexis just smiled and replied that not everything is as simple as it seems to the girl. Raymond is very sneaky and won't let him get in his way. In addition, there is another crown prince, Bruno. They talked for a long time until they heard screams in the distance. It was the girl's father who was looking for his daughter. He was already starting to worry, so Sophia waved to the guy and disappeared behind the rose bushes. But the boy called out to her and said that she might get lost here, so he would take her to the entrance to the palace. It will be better this way, and she will not waste time looking for a way out of the garden. Sophia was not used to this, but she perfectly saw and felt what Alexis felt in this palace. Everyone looked at him with contempt, and not a single person supported him. She felt very sorry for this boy. It is very difficult to be an outcast in such a high society. She didn't understand at all why the father couldn't protect the child because he was his son, just like Raymond. Alexis's appearance and his ruined suit did not allow the boy to go further. Therefore, he said goodbye to the girl, saying that she had helped him a lot and motivated him well to move towards his dream. For the first time, the boy was praised by someone other than his mother, and he was extremely happy about it. An unfamiliar girl gave him the strength and energy to fight on and show everyone what he is worth. When the boy returned to the castle in the north, the mother almost fainted when she saw her son. What happened to him? Someone must have beaten him up and left him lying in a puddle. But why didn't he defend himself? The last thing in the world Alexis wanted was to upset his mother and tell her the truth about what happened to him. So the boy said that he tripped and fell into the mud and then handed the woman some delicious flowers. The woman hugged the child tightly. She knew that she had raised her son well, and in the future he would definitely show all enemies what he was capable of, and that he was worthy of being called the crown prince. After everyone had calmed down, the son told his mother about the wonderful girl he met in the imperial garden. He was admired by Sophia's beauty, intelligence, and most importantly, courage, and he really wanted to be like her. Well, then his mother just joked with him, saying that her boy fell in love for the first time. But this is normal. At his age, everyone falls in love with beautiful, smart girls. Already rubbing himself with soap in the bathroom and washing off the dirt, the boy thought that his mother had misunderstood him. It was not love, but admiration in its purest form. And maybe a little love. Alexis just didn't know what love was. He had never encountered this before, and he had not thought about it and he didn't really have any communication with girls. But he doesn't mind seeing Sophia again. At dinner, the guy saw that his mother put his flowers on the table and often looked at them. He knew that she was pleased, because it was very cold in their area, and flowers did not grow here. But suddenly, something terrible and incomprehensible happened. The woman felt bad and fell from her chair to the floor, losing consciousness. Everything happened so quickly that the guy could not react. The doctor came, and as it turned out later, his mother was suffering from a fatal illness. She did not tell this to her son so as not to upset the child, and tried to hide the truth as long as possible. But everything comes to an end, and now Alexis sat next to his mother's bed, and did not understand what to do next. The first step is to ensure that the woman gets back on her feet. The guy blamed the emperor for forgetting about the existence of his mother and sending her to the ends of the earth so as not to anger the official queen and her son Raymond. He acted very meanly, but the mother thought differently. She told Alexis that when she was pregnant with him, the queen wanted to kill her. But the emperor came up with a way out and sent the woman away to the misty castle, thus saving her and her son. They have very little service, not because the emperor spared money for it, on the contrary, through strangers the queen could harm the woman and child. Therefore, only reliable and trusted servants lived with them in the castle. His majesty did not visit them not because he did not want to or was ashamed. This was to make it seem to the queen that his heart had grown cold towards the maid and her child. 
and so that she would give up trying to get rid of them. The guy knew absolutely nothing about this. He thought that his father was a callous and emotionless person and also very weak, but it turned out that he tried with all his might to protect him and his mother. Before her death, the mother took off the beautiful pendant that she always wore around her neck and handed it to her son. She said that it was a gift from the emperor and now she leaves it to her son. This is the only gift she can leave for her child. The pendant will always remind him of her and her love. Let this stone always be with him now. The woman asked Alexis to never give up and go towards his goal. She knows what her son is capable of and what he deserves. Therefore, he wants him to prove to everyone that he can achieve the status of crown prince. He is also the son of the emperor, and his father loves him as much as the other two sons. Let him just remember that he also has the right to become who he wants to be and live happily. And then Alexis said that his main dream was to show these arrogant aristocrat how much they were wrong about him. He doesn't want to leave country A in the hands of people like them. Finally, he understood what he wanted in this life. He wants to become the king of this empire and believes that he has the strength to achieve this goal. The little stranger opened his eyes and convinced him to move on. These were exactly the words Alexis's mother wanted to hear. She warned that it would not be easy and her son would have to endure a lot and try hard to achieve his dream. But she is confident that her son can do it. At the last moment before her death, the woman asked her son to promise her something. When he becomes emperor and puts a sparkling crown on his head, let him remain himself. The son understood that his mother could not be returned. But he promised the woman that he would never deviate from the right path and would remain that way. He was raised by his mother. He swears and will not break his oath. The boy endured his mother's funeral very hard. He understood that he was left completely alone in this world, and there was no one else to support him. Few people gathered. The emperor never appeared. But then the official queen appeared. She probably arrived at the funeral in order to personally verify that her rival was really dead. The woman could not hide her pleasure. She was angry that Alexis's mother was allowed to live in the world only because once upon a time his majesty liked her. She was a real thorn in the queen's side. The woman explained her appearance in the northern castle by the fact that Alexis's mother was the official favorite of the emperor, so she, as the queen, could not help but attend her funeral. When leaving, the queen said that the only thing the child's mother managed to do right was to die while his majesty was abroad on business. This evil and vindictive woman was a real witch. She did not hesitate to say such terrible words at the funeral and right in front of the deceased's own son. But the guy held on with all his might. Liz clutched his mother's pendant in his palm. He must endure everything. He is strong, and he promised his mother that he would make everyone who treated her like dirt feel sorry. He really will not allow such creatures to rule his country. All that's left is to be patient a little longer and reach adulthood. Only then can he officially come into his own and begin the fight for the status of crown prince. He will become emperor. It was on that day that Alex firmly decided that he would prove to everyone, and first of all to himself and his deceased mother, that it was worth something to be called the emperor of this country in the future. And now he is slowly but surely moving towards his goal. Many years later, he still keeps his mother's pendant near her heart. It is a reminder of the woman who gave him life and the incentive to keep his promise to her. Sophia listened carefully to the guy's story and couldn't believe that he had so much strength to endure all the bullying and humiliation. How strong is this man? At first, the boy wanted to wipe the nose of all those who so persistently tried to prove to him that he was a second-class child of the emperor. Therefore, he tirelessly studied various sciences. Alexis succeeded in absolutely everything. After some time, he was appointed commander of the knightly order. Being among strong and brave knights gave him self-confidence. The knights, for their part, deeply respected their commander for his intelligence and honesty. They knew that Alexis would protect them in any situation, so they trusted him unconditionally. The guy won many battles, became a famous commander, and thus won the trust of the common people, Absolutely everyone loved him except his father and brother Raymond. It was these factors that led Alexis to decide to become the emperor of this country. He loves his people and, if necessary, will be able to protect them because he knows how to do it. This young man had enough love and attention for everyone. He cared about ordinary people, 
did not forget his mother, and confidently walked into the future. But at the same time, Alexis was honest with himself and with those around him. It was clear that now he consciously wanted to achieve such a result. This is not only to fulfill the wishes of his deceased mother. Now, he is confidently moving towards his goal. Sophia was convinced that the guy would achieve his goal, and she and his friends will definitely support and help him on the path to his dream. He is very strong and can handle anything, even Raymond. The girl asked Alexis to show him his pendant closer. He was wonderful. The guy's mother knew a lot about jewelry. It was a wonderful jade stone of a delightful blue hue. The guy said that the emperor gave this jewelry to his mother. He personally chose it and hung it around the woman's neck. But that was a very long time ago, at the beginning of their relationship, when he loved her. But Sophia realized that the emperor did not stop loving his mother. He simply couldn't show his feelings. Being an emperor is difficult. You have to live by rules that you don't accept or support. He kept Raymond close to him, but for some reason, he appointed Alexis as commander of the knightly order. He trusted this guy with the security of his country, and he was not mistaken in his choice. This means that the emperor watched his sons for a long time, tested the waters, and checked whether Alexis could be entrusted with an important part of the work in the state. After all, managing an army is not easy. Then the emperor watched from afar as his son won the love of the knights and authority of the common people. He won wars with ease, was an excellent strategist, and was not afraid of anything. So Sophia told Alexis that she was sure that the emperor never stopped loving either his mother or himself. Circumstances just happened that way. The guy was silent for a while, but then replied that, unfortunately, he had never felt his father's love, but only a neutral attitude. But maybe there is some truth in Sophia's words. Alexis remembered that his father really seemed happy when he appointed him to lead the Order of Knights, and when Alexis made progress, he always praised him. The girl thought that initially she simply did not want to give Raymond the opportunity to become emperor, so she came to Alexis the only person who could resist this monster. But now she understands that she made the right choice. She wants to see Alexis exclusively on the throne. He is the one who should become the next emperor. And now Alexis promises the second woman that he will definitely become the crown prince and in the future the emperor of the country. Now there is simply no turning back. But the guy asks Sophia to always be by his side. Without her, he won't succeed, not because he's weak. For a long time now, the girl has become his inspiration and support. Sophia, in turn, promised that she would never leave Alexis under any circumstances and would do everything in her power to help him achieve his goal and punish the killers of his family. But from now on, she does this not only because of revenge on Raymond. She desperately wants the person who ascends the throne to be worthy and love his people. That's what she wants. Several days passed after their conversation. The silence on Raymond's part was strange. He was probably drawing up his next plan of action, and soon they would hear the bad news. Bruno arrived from a neighboring country. The guys realized that they already missed each other. We need to think about how they will act further, because for now the matter is at a standstill. All hope lay in Bruno's analogical thinking, and the guy did not disappoint. He noticed that at the ball, Raymond was openly fawning over the aristocracy, trying to gain attention. But it was clear that apart from flattery, this killer had nothing to offer serious and influential people. In this way, he wants to make sure that the nobles who have not yet decided will take his side. Bruno said that it would be very good if Duke Edelbal, for his part, would also slowly influence society and put a spoke in the wheels of stupid Raymond, spoiling his reputation. It is clear that this will not be enough, but in the near future, the guys will play their main trump card, and none of the vile opponents even realizes that this will happen. Bruno believes that in their case, the common people should take the central role, not pompous aristocrats. Therefore, their main support will be simple and honest people. Until recently, power in the country was inherited according to a certain principle. He wasn't the best. But now the situation has changed because the two princes are vying for the highest title. In this case, the dispute is resolved in a completely different way. The Empire holds a vote in which absolutely all residents of the country take part, and the result is not subject to discussion. This means that all people must cast their vote for one candidate or another. 
and it is clear that there are many more common people in the empire than aristocrats. Bruno has already calculated everything and provided the results to his friends. Fortunately, if the elections take place, then Raymond simply has no chance of winning them. People will definitely choose Alexis. For ordinary workers and peasants, Alexis is a symbol of honesty and courage. He has won so many battles and is a fearless hero who has led their empire to countless victories. Indeed, Alexis has won incredible respect from the common people, which cannot be said about the scoundrel Raymond, who is afraid to even show his nose on the street without security. Bruno asked his brother if he knew that people call him a fearless hero. But Alexis was so modest that he simply blushed and said that this was the first time he had heard such a thing. The third prince suggested not to sit on the estate, but to go straight to the people and further win their trust. We need to be closer to ordinary people. And he has a great idea. Therefore, within an hour, the guys entered the most popular tavern in the capital. It was full of people. The atmosphere of fun and carefree reigned. People ate after work, talked, and shared news. Initially, Sophia was shocked. She was not used to visiting such places. Everything here was strange and new to her. Aristocrats did not spend time in taverns, especially girls. The owner of the establishment offered the guys a free table and brought wine and snacks. The girl calmed down a little and suggested thinking about how to proceed, but it turned out that the rune had already come up with everything. He pretended to be a stranger and asked Alexis loudly if his majesty was the prince whom people call the fearless hero. This trick immediately attracted the attention of absolutely all visitors in the establishment. People turned around and looked at the table where Alexis was sitting. Everyone was interested in seeing the prince in person. Bruno, in turn, began to praise the commander of the Order of Knights even louder and say that it was time for him to take the place of the crown prince. That would be right and fair. Next was Sophia. She shouted that it would be right not to allow the coward Raymond the imperial throne, after all, His Highness Alexis deserves this much more. The people will support him. Alexis answered loudly that there was one problem. In order for the emperor to make him heir to the throne, as many people as possible must vote for him. And the aristocrats, unfortunately, will choose Raymond. The tavern owner clarified how they could vote to help the prince, and he replied that he needed to write the name of the future emperor on paper and throw this piece of paper into a special box. The principle is very simple and clear. If there are fewer sheets with the name of Alexis, he will never become emperor, and His Majesty Raymond will rule the country. But the people in the tavern shouted that they would never allow such a turn of events. Many of those present fought alongside Alexis on the battlefield, and thanks to him remained alive. So now they are in debt. One of the waitresses said that she would ask her entire village and all her relatives to come on election day and vote for Alexis because her husband serves in a knightly order and greatly respects his commander. Bruno's strategy was a win-win. They started their campaign from a small tavern, but rumors that the prince was here spread with great speed. What pleased Sophia most was that they were achieving success in an honest way, without killing or humiliating anyone, as Raymond does. This is their trump card, and people will definitely support them. Now Bruno said that it was too early to rejoice in success, there is a lot of work ahead of them, and the tavern alone will not give the desired result. They need to further disseminate information. It seemed that Bruno still had a lot of trump cards in his pocket. The guy said that they would need to stop by one more place this evening, and an hour later, they stood in front of the inn of the knightly order. Sophia and Alexis didn't even ask why they came here. They completely trusted this smart and unpredictable guy and knew that if he came up with something, it would give an excellent result. Barry met the young people. He was surprised to see his boss and friend here. According to the latest information, Alexis was supposed to have business in the city, so why is he here now, and not alone? Seeing two princes and a young duchess in front of him, the guy froze in a bow. He had never seen the youngest of the princes before, but it turned out that Bruno is a very pleasant and cheerful young man. It seemed that the third prince felt confident and comfortable in any situation. He said that he would like to communicate with the knights, he has some interesting information. He wants the knights to prove their love and loyalty to their boss, and at the right time help him ascend the throne and receive the title of crown prince, because he cannot cope alone. Bruno said that each of the knights had relatives and friends from the aristocrats. They must influence them and convince them, if necessary, 
to support Prince Alexis and not Raymond. The knights loved and respected their boss very much, and this was great news for them. They were only in favor of seeing their commander on the imperial throne. His Highness Alexis was a true friend to them. There was no case when the prince failed them or set them up during the battle. Therefore, they will do everything to answer him faithfully. Someone suggested that in the provinces, people do not know at all how things are in the capital and see absolutely no difference between Alexis and Raymond. Therefore, it is necessary to convey information to them. It was true. It is necessary to explain to the common people who live far away in the provinces that only Alex is able to improve their living conditions and take care of their future. And those knights who do not have relatives in noble families just need to convince their relatives and tell the whole truth about Prince Raymond and his vile methods of fighting for the throne of the emperor. After talking with the knights, the guys were absolutely sure that they would receive maximum support from the knights and from their relatives, too. Therefore, it was definitely not in vain that they decided to come here. Bruno was very pleased with the work done. Now they have reliable support from the knights, they have the support of some aristocrats, and they hope that the people will be for Alexis. The third prince turned out to be an amazing person. What a blessing that one day they decided to go to his house and ask for support. They were very lucky that he was on their side. Bruno is a very strong opponent, and it is better not to stand in his way. Previously, he had always been in the shadows, but this did not make him any less confident in his abilities, and he had his own scores to settle with Raymond. He never interfered with anything, as the first prince wanted. But then something happened, and now he wants to destroy Raymond just as much as Sophia. Therefore, they can be calm about his help. But even the young duchess did not know what Raymond's next move would be. His meanness knows no bounds, so you should always be on guard. Nobody knows what other trump cards he has. Sophia had been tormented by one question for a long time. Raymond's mother is from an influential family of aristocrats and behaves very defiantly. But for some reason, her relatives are not particularly supportive of her son's candidacy. Bruno was also surprised, because this is strange. When you are looking for allies, the choice usually falls on people you can definitely trust. But, probably, trust in this family is not so strong. And Alexis said that this is why he chooses only reliable and honest people as his allies, who will not betray at the first opportunity. He trusts Bruno and Sophia. Indeed, they took the Duke of Boldega as their allies. But no one in the country could say anything good about this man. He was a slippery guy and only cared about himself. As soon as the situation changes in the other direction, the Duke will easily go over to Alexis's side in order to save himself, his reputation, and his money. He will leave Raymond alone with his problems. Also Raymond's mother. The Queen came from a noble ducal family, but her brother shares fairly moderate views and does not have big ambitions. He's very passive. Even when his own sister became Queen, he did not want to enter into the game for power and authority. He continued to lead a quiet life, not appearing in public. Thus, Duke Raiden turned out to be a rather uninterested person, and also far from the most influential member of their family. And Raymond probably doesn't feel the need to use Raiden as an ally. It also seemed to Alexis that the situation with the Queen's brother was not so simple. Something is wrong there. Therefore, the Prince assigned his knights to the Duke. If Raymond tries to contact him, they will know about it immediately. Late in the evening, the girl returned to her estate, and she was pleasantly surprised that the maid and the little boy they had saved from Raymond's hands were waiting for her. The boy smiled for the first time. The boy was still a little shy because he was not used to such conditions, and besides, he was all alone. His parents were dead. Annie tried as best she could to cheer Leo up and relieve his pain. Sophia told the child that from now on, he would live in her house. Her maid will take care of him as if she were her own son, and the Duchess has also made an agreement with the teachers, and the boy will receive an education. In some way, Sophia felt guilty for the death of his mother, so she promised that she would give her son absolutely everything so that he would not feel like an unhappy orphan. And the girl also wanted to raise the boy to be a real man, so she decided that sword fighting lessons would benefit him and would be very useful in his adult life. The boy was truly delighted with this news. Previously, he could only dream of this, and now he and the Duchess will take self-defense lessons from the best knight Amy.
She couldn't protect his mother at the right time, so she knows how important it is to be able to stand up for yourself and for your loved ones. And Leo is also a man. And in the future, she plans to take official custody of him. Life was in full swing in the Imperial Palace. Raymond seems to be up to something. He gathered aristocrats for a dinner party, and everyone pretended to flatter him that he would be the next crown prince. The fact that Duke Raiden again did not show up for the reception with his beloved nephew was noticed not only by Raymond, but also by everyone present in the palace. He did not pay his respects to him. Of course, the cowardly prince tried not to show that he was furious that his uncle had ignored him, but left alone, he almost exploded with anger. Raymond remembered how 11 years ago, when he and Alexis were studying, the Queen Mother always scolded him for the fact that his godless brother was a much better student. Such news always infuriated the Queen, and she was very angry with Raymond and scolded him. And he, in turn, came up with various excuses and tried to present his brother in the worst light. Very often, the mother became so angry that she beat her son and at the same time called him a pathetic coward, incapable of anything. He has royal blood in him, so why is he such a weakling? The woman did not understand how her son could lose to such a half-breed as Alexis. After all, his mother is a simple servant. Why doesn't Raymond stop embarrassing her in front of her family? When the queen didn't like something, she was her son. But at the same time, she said that she was doing this for the sake of her son, because he makes no effort at all and loses to Alexis. Sometimes Raymond secretly spied on how Alexis and his mother behaved. It was clear that the woman loved her son madly. She constantly praised and encouraged him. And she hugged him so tightly and sincerely. It was clear that his competitor was warm and comfortable in his mother's arms. He felt absolutely protected there, even without a noble pedigree. What he saw simply blew his mind away. Why can this vile boy without family and tribe feel so happy, and he, the real son of the emperor, is always unhappy? The queen never once looked at her son with the same love with which a simple maid looked at her child, whom everyone despised and did not consider to be the crown prince. He probably needs to try harder in his studies and self-development, and then his mother will definitely notice this and praise Raymond. He doesn't even dream that the queen will be able to hug him. It won't happen. Raymond knew very well then that the suit in which Alexis came to the queen's birthday had been sewn by his mother with her own hands. The second prince looked amazing, and he decided to ruin his brother's outfit. The stupid and vile prince thus took it out on Alexis. He took pleasure in humiliating and offending his brother. He didn't play honestly because he always lost. He covered Alexis with mud from head to toe and laughed right in the boy's face. Let him not be such a handsome man. The suit was ruined. Let him return to his foggy castle to his mother. Raymond then said that Alexis's destiny was to serve him, the first and rightful prince. Therefore, he must crawl on his knees in front of him and be afraid to raise his head. His low origin does not allow him to rise from his knees and claim not only the title of crown prince, but even the love of the emperor. He is the complete opposite of Raymond. Satisfied with himself, Raymond returned to the palace. He told his mother that he had gotten even with Alexis, but the woman didn't even listen. She scolded her son for being absent from the ball for a long time. The woman was furious because Raymond was supposed to meet the daughter of Duke Edelball at the ball. They must get this girl as their future bride. The Ducal family is very influential in the country. Even people of royal blood listen to the Duke's opinions. Therefore, they should get to know these people better. Without ceremony, the queen informed her son that he must do everything to win the heart of a young but influential girl and marry her in the future. Then the title of crown prince is guaranteed to him. He needs to tense up now and get this girl's attention. Otherwise, Alexis will get ahead of him here too. Therefore, she does not want to listen to excuses and asks her son to act. Otherwise, she will regret it. When the girl left the Imperial Garden, she was immediately led into the hall and introduced to His Majesty Raymond. The boy immediately realized that this girl could help him achieve his goal. Sophia bowed to the prince and said that she was very pleased to meet Raymond. She exuded strength and confidence. Raymond noticed this immediately because he was a weakling himself. And then the girl said something that Raymond was not ready to hear. Sophia said that the boy was not at all like his brother. She met the second prince in the garden, and he is very handsome. The queen could barely control herself. And here this rootless Alexis was ahead of her son. 
How did he manage to meet the girl? This was not in her plans. Everything was getting out of control. Sophia said that the second prince kindly helped her get out of the garden where she got lost. Alexis seemed very kind and well-mannered to her, but slightly sad. They had a good chat. Raymond understood that, without even doing anything, he had already angered his mother, and she would then take it out on him. Here, too, his brother galloped ahead of him and became the first to meet the young duchess. Sophia's father was a wise man and understood why they were called to the palace. But he didn't like the situation, so he took his daughter, said goodbye to the queen and her son, and went home. It seems that the queen was in a good mood only on the day of the death and funeral of her rival, Alexis's mother. Finally, the emperor's illegitimate son would be truly vulnerable. The woman she feared but didn't admit it, and who was a constant eyesore, finally died. So better days will come, and he and Raymond will be able to defeat this vile boy. Now, only the queen will receive the emperor's love and attention. He will not call the name of this rootless servant in his sleep at night. Finally, she won. The queen knew full well that her marriage to the emperor was a net benefit for their families. In fact, the sovereign always loved this vile servant, and he also loved her son. He just tried not to show it. The marriage with the princess of the kingdom of Lyriquel was needed solely for diplomatic purposes. There was no hint of any kind of love here, and he was absolutely neutral towards the son from this marriage. And the boy never showed up in the palace. There really was a current queen, but there were rumors that their family was not interested in increasing their influence in the country, and from the principality they only had one title, they did not have any special power. Weak leaders lost their former power and the queen's family. Therefore, the woman very rarely turned to her family for help and never asked for support for her son. Even the servants in the palace whispered that the queen was elected only because at that time it was beneficial to the emperor. He doesn't love her at all. That's why she's angry. The woman took out all her anger and hatred on her son Raymond, who seemed pitiful and helpless to her, as well as on the servants. But that didn't make it any easier for her. Sometimes it got to the point where she got so angry that she beat her maids and then kicked them out. She could not make any claims to the emperor. He simply did not listen to her. She simply could not stand the fact that even the servants in the corners were discussing her life with the emperor, and any maid could confirm that the emperor did not feel a drop of love for this woman. Raymond was still very young and did not understand much. For example, the fact that Alexis's mother died, and for some reason everyone, even the servants in the palace, feel sorry not for her, but for the queen. Therefore, the woman's goal was to prove to absolutely everyone that only she and her son are the legitimate heirs to the throne, and Raymond must receive the title of crown prince at all costs. By any means, and even with any dire consequences, she will make sure that only her son can take the throne. She will help Raymond destroy Alexis. And if her son does not do what she asks, then he is a real weakling, and she gave birth to him in vain. He must become the sole heir to the throne no matter what. From then on, the queen began to prepare Raymond for the title of crown prince. She controlled his every step and severely punished him for every offense, but this did not make her son stronger, rather the opposite. But despite all her efforts, the woman fell ill with an incurable disease and died. Only Raymond felt sorry for her passing, but he didn't do it for long. Until her last day, the queen continued to tell her son that he must become crown prince at any cost, but she never told her child that they loved him. Until her death, this woman saw in Raymond only a tool with which she could fulfill her personal desires and achieve the love of the emperor. And Raymond has only one path left to become crown prince. He did not know any other way and did not understand how to live in harmony with himself and with the outside world. The prince learned his only lesson from his mother. He will force those who do not obey him to do so. This is what the queen always did. He will achieve victory with his own strength and destroy Alexis. To do this, he has enough meanness and cunning. Annie, as always, came in the morning with fresh news. This time they were not bad, but so far there was too little good. The country was preparing for the election of the crown prince. The girl also volunteered to help Prince Alexis. She has many friends, and Annie will ask all of them to come to the elections and vote for the most honest and courageous candidate, Prince Alexis. In the empire, most of the common people did not know how to read properly, so Annie had to correctly convey the necessary information to the people. And she knew how to do this. 
It's easy enough to spread rumors. The young people also decided to have a reception. For this, Sophia wore her most beautiful dress. The girl was irresistible, so no one could take their eyes off the young duchess. Alexis was also irresistible. Blue suited him very well. His suit suited him perfectly. The guy looked majestic, and a modest smile sometimes flashed on his handsome face. The guy is not used to dressing so pompously. His clothes were always modest and simple. But Sophia reminded him that he was not on the battlefield, but at a reception of important and influential guests, so clothing was important. The public's reaction to the appearance of the prince and duchess in high society immediately shocked those present. They were so perfect for each other, and only a blind man could not fail to notice the spark of love between them. Sophia greeted the high-ranking guests and smiled at each of them. She was indeed very glad that so many influential people responded to her and Alexis's invitation. The guests were also very pleased that the young couple invited them to such an important reception. Everyone was having fun, drinking delicious wine, having fun and talking about future elections and voting. One of the dukes suggested that His Majesty Prince Alexis would have a difficult time in this race for the throne. They, like the aristocracy, prefer to follow the principle of blood succession to the throne. Alexis didn't really understand why he was treated this way. The blood of the emperor also flows in his veins. It's just that his mother comes from an ordinary family. Why does everyone deny this fact? Someone from the nobility reminded him that his mother was a servant. But then Sophia decided to stop this conversation. She approached the man and, in an even tone, simply asked him to leave her house. The pompous nobleman said that this was very rude of her. But the girl repeated her request again, and said that if he had become deaf from old age, then she could repeat it louder again, so that absolutely all the guests in the hall could hear. Sophia decided to dot all the points in this situation. She simply said that people supporting Alexis had gathered here, and they didn't want to see Raymond's spies. Duke Edelball entered the game and reminded the vile spy that it was thanks to the Edelball family that he rose to such status. And besides, he has not yet paid him all the money he borrowed. The man did not expect such shame. He did not know what to say, how to react to the Duke's words. He is really mired in debt, and Edelball patiently forgives him and waits for his money. The first spy was exposed, and that was just the beginning. There was no point in wasting any more time on such pathetic and corrupt people as this nobleman. They need to move on. Sophia suggested not to forget that they have a house full of guests, and it would be rude to leave them without the attention of the owners. Therefore, she returned to the hall and asked those present for forgiveness for the incident. The guests realized that it was better not to play such jokes with the powerful Edelball family. The Duke helped so many of them get out of poverty and gain the status of aristocrats. Suddenly, the girl heard a painfully familiar voice. Someone greeted the guests and said that it was a lot of fun here. Sophia turned and froze. Her ex-friend Samantha stood in the middle of the hall. Then the traitor approached the Duchess and said hello. She said that they had not seen each other for a long time, since Samantha married His Highness Prince Raymond. This vile woman also told the guests that she once came to visit the Duchess, but she asked her servant to throw her out the door. But friends don't do that. Why did Sophia do this? The girl's eyebrow didn't even twitch. She answered in a calm voice that everyone should not come to the Duke's house. Samantha should have warned about her visit. Sophia reminded the girl that they had not been friends for a long time, so there was no need to come to visit her to find out useful information for her lover, Raymond. But Samantha decided to act out a real tragedy in front of the guests. She began to fake cry and lament how Sophia could treat her friend so cruelly. She sincerely loves her. The Duchess smiled. How can they be friends if she is Alexis's fiancé and Samantha is the sneaky Raymond's? Both princes are fighting for the throne. How can they be friends? They are also enemies. It seemed that Samantha could burst from anger and shame. She did not expect such behavior from Sophia because she was used to the fact that the girl was always quiet and always agreed with her friend's opinion. The Duchess shouted after her that Samantha needed to be more careful about her behavior. Nobody invited her to this evening but she went ahead and stuck it out. It's just not nice to do that. There was no doubt that it was Raymond who sent this deceitful and tactless girl here. Now he sat in his castle like a cowardly criminal and waited for news from his mistress. Afterwards, 
Sophia told the guests that she had long suspected that Raymond and Samantha were secretly dating behind her back. So she left the traitor and agreed to marry Alexis. He won't betray her. Then the girl asked the guests not to pay attention to such unpleasant nuances. She thought to herself that during the evening she managed to deal with two vile traitors. Samantha was simply burning with anger. Yes, how long can this last? Damn Sophia was again one step ahead and gathered influential people. But now Samantha's status is no lower than her. Samantha was originally a princess. After the birth of his older brother, his parents did not have children for a long time. But then she was born. The long-awaited girl with beautiful hair. The parents were crazy about the girl who was born so late. Her brothers also adored her, and she lived in the Count's family, not knowing what poverty, suffering, and betrayal were. Her parents were no longer young, so they spoiled their girl and did not deny her anything. She was also a very sweet child, with a beautiful face and long, fluffy hair. Her mother taught her good manners, and her father and older brother made sure that the family did not experience need, either now or in the future. Everything was fine until a certain time. One day her mother called her and said that today they would have a meeting with very influential people. Therefore, the girl must behave very well and not make her family blush. A little girl came to visit with the adults. She was also incredibly beautiful. But unlike Samantha, she was very quiet and modest. This was her first acquaintance with Sophia. Samantha's mother, seeing the guests, immediately froze in a bow, and the girl remained standing straight. But the mother also forced the girl to bow, saying that the guests were much higher in status. They were dukes. It turns out that the Duchess had health problems, and she and her daughter came to these places to get better. They stopped at the estate of the Count, who kindly received them. Since Sophia's mother needed rest after the trip, the owners suggested that her daughter play with their daughter Samantha. They are almost the same age, so they will quickly find a common language. Then Samantha felt like a living toy. No one asked her if she wanted to play with a strange girl, who was also the daughter of Duke Edelball. What should she talk about with an aristocrat of this level? But the girl turned out to be quite friendly. She immediately smiled and asked Samantha to address her first name, so that adults could think about titles and social status. The girls started talking. It turned out that they were both seven years old and had many common interests. Samantha offered to show her guest her home, and she, in turn, said that they would become friends. But the friendship turned out to be strange. Now Samantha was required to look like little Duchess Sophia. They constantly made comments to her and asked her to be more polite with the girl. This was a real punishment for the Count's daughter. She is used to living in love and harmony with herself and her family. But after the arrival of the Duchess and her daughter, the family changed dramatically. Previously, her family doted on her, but now everything has changed. If the little Duchess didn't like something, Samantha was always scolded. And the girl now blames Sophia for all her troubles. It's all because of her and because of her mother. Her own family stopped loving her because Sophia was smarter, had a better upbringing, and behaved more modestly and quietly than Samantha. Years passed, the girls grew up, but they did not stop communicating. All because Samantha had no more friends. She did not communicate with anyone except the Duchess, and she did not mind spending time with her. When they appeared at social functions, people around them whispered and continued to compare the girls. They gave Sophia the best compliments, and said about Samantha that she was sticky, and the girl did not understand at all why high society treated her this way. After all, she is no worse than Sophia. They just became friends, and she didn't consider it necessary to have other friends. She just wasn't as lucky as Sophia. After all, Samantha is an ordinary girl. Yes, she is the daughter of a rich count, but her friend is the heiress of a ducal family, and this is much higher than Samantha's title. All Samantha wanted was revenge for all the humiliation she suffered as Sophia's friend. The times will come when she will also achieve the same high position in society. Arriving at the Imperial Palace, Samantha shouted at Raymond and demanded that the prince quickly deal with this impudent duchess. She can't stand it anymore. The girl told how she appeared at a party given in honor of Prince Alexis, and how Duchess Sophia humiliated her in front of everyone and kicked her out of the estate, telling her not to appear in her way again but everything had to be done very carefully. Aristocrats must protect their reputation. 
If rumors spread that they met behind the Duchess's back, they will lose the trust of influential families. Influential families close to the Emperor do not forgive lies and betrayal. Therefore, having learned the whole truth, they can go over to the side of Prince Alexis and help him become Crown Prince. There are no young girls in the royal family, and among the ducal families the only girl is Sophia. She is the same age as the rest of the heirs and belongs to a noble family. Therefore, they should start acting more radically. Otherwise, if Raymond does not ascend to the throne, then Samantha will never be able to surpass this upstart Duchess Sophia. Raymond also became furious. Because of this arrogant Sophia, everything does not go according to plan. When did she become so strong and self-confident? Or Alexis gives her this confidence. The prince tried to calm the girl down and said that their main battle was still ahead. Don't despair. If she was slapped in the face, then she should answer with her fist. They will do so only a little later. The party was over, and Sophia was very happy about it. She needed to rest, because Samantha had frayed her nerves enough, but now everyone knows who their real enemy is. Having learned about the connection between Raymond and Samantha, the aristocrats, rushing between the two sides, will get rid of all doubts and go over to their side with Alexis. After all, honesty is valued everywhere. But I couldn't sit in peace for long. Amy ran into the room. The girl was slightly annoyed and scared, and it was too late for self-defense. Something must have happened. Sophia was not mistaken. Something terrible happened. Amy heard the gossip that Raymond and Samantha were spreading. They gossiped that Sophia refused Raymond's engagement because she was already secretly dating Alexis at that time. But how can this be? They made the girl look very bad. It was as if she was cheating on her official fiancé and was secretly the mistress of the second prince Alexis. Even Amy was shocked. She understood perfectly well how this could turn out for Alexis. He would lose his reputation and miss his only chance to become crown prince, and Sophia will be disgraced. The girl said that rumors had already reached even the Order of Knights, and in the markets, all the women were whispering about it. If nothing is done, both Sophia and Alexis could suffer greatly. But how could this happen? Of course, that snake Samantha did it. It couldn't have happened without her. She wants to take revenge in any way for her shame at the dinner party yesterday. Sophia shouted to the maid to immediately inform Mr. Alexis and Prince Bruno about what had happened. It was necessary to act with lightning speed so that rumors did not spread throughout the empire. Amy said she overheard two women discussing the topic at the market. Madame Sophia and Prince Raymond were engaged, but at the same time, she was secretly dating Prince Alexis. The gossip was based on the true story of Samantha and Raymond. It was they who met in secret and became lovers at a time when Sophia was preparing to marry Raymond. Although the emperor publicly gave permission for his union with Alexis and blessed them, who will now believe that Sophia was not in a secret relationship with him while she was waiting for her engagement to Raymond. The girl was so lost in her thoughts that she did not even notice how two princes and her maid entered the room. The guys were also already aware of the rumors that were spreading, so they rushed like a bullet. This time, Sophia screwed up big time. It was her fault. She didn't think well and said all sorts of stupid things to Samantha in front of strangers. This touched the traitor to the core, and she takes revenge. Now she very much regrets her action, but she told the honest truth. Raymond really was Samantha's lover, being Sophia's fiancé, but she cannot prove it, no evidence. Alexis tried to somehow calm her down. Yes, there is no direct evidence, but you shouldn't immediately despair and give up. They will think together about how to return everything to its place. The one who wasn't worried at all was Bruno. He, as always, smiled and said that not everything is as bad as it seems. It turns out that Alexis has been keeping an eye on Samantha and Raymond's relationship all this time. Yes, it turns out that Alexis, when he heard the story about Raymond and Samantha, began to secretly follow them. He didn't tell anyone about it, but he thought it might be useful. The prince's trusted people intercepted correspondence between Raymond and Samantha, where they confessed their feelings to each other, where they threw mud at Alexis and Sophia, calling them stupid and naive. Bruno smiled again and said that there was no need to worry so much. Now they have official proof, thanks to the second prince. Now we urgently need to go after them. They took a carriage and went to the city center. After some time, the carriage stopped near a large hotel. It was an ideal place for secret meetings. 
you don't have to be afraid of getting caught. The status of such a hotel hires appropriate staff who constantly keep their mouth shut. Therefore, you can be sure that the information will not go beyond these walls. Alexis said that these two traders have long been using this hotel as a secret love nest. They probably know that the establishment staff will not spread rumors. All this is good. But how then does Alexis know about these secret meetings if no one saw it or saw it but won't tell? But Bruno winked. The Imperial family has informants everywhere. No matter how strict the rules for storing confidential information are, if the royal house needs it, it will leak through any barrier. Therefore, it was not difficult to find out a little more than was possible. At the hotel, the right person was already waiting for them and led them into the back room where they could discuss everything without prying eyes and ears. Bruno introduced his friends and said that they could be trusted. Sophia noticed that Bruno has his own people at every step. When the hotel employee welcomed them into the room, there was already prepared coffee on the table. It turns out that they were already waiting. The young guy asked to drink hot coffee and wait a few minutes. Then he returned with some magazine. This was a list of guests who often rented their rooms for the night. But the guy said that visitors can register under someone else's name. After all, sneaky people often do dirty things in hotels, make illegal purchases and so on. But Bruno objected. He said that the emperor had amended the law and now hotel guests are required to enter exclusively their official data into the register for safety and compliance with the law. Bruno began to carefully study the lists, and within a few minutes he saw Samantha's first and last name. It turns out that she entered her information so as not to involve Raymond in this secret matter. Of course, the emperor's son cannot spend the night in hotels. This compromises his father. So, Samantha took over this part of the work. There was no doubt that she met Raymond there. Why should two adults who have their own homes meet at night in a hotel? This is already understandable for love encounters that no one should know about. Having borrowed documents with Samantha's name and signature for a while, the young people left their hotel. There's no point in staying here. And then suddenly, Raymond and his mistress will come. You can't meet them here. Finally, they have the evidence in their hands, and now it will be easier for them to fight these traitors. They will open the eyes of the people and bring these vile deceivers to light. Sophia still felt guilty about the situation. But the guys calmed her down. People will definitely choose their side when they find out the truth about Raymond's affair with Samantha. Finally, the Duchess managed to get home. She was very tired. This whole situation exhausted her. So the girl did not lose hope of just resting and being alone with her thoughts. Everything in the estate was as before. The servants went about their business. But there was one strange thing. Leo didn't meet her. The boy ran out onto the porch every time he heard the sound of an approaching carriage. None of the maids had seen him since the morning. Ani thought that he was playing in his room, but the child was not there. Everything turned upside down in Sophia's soul and fear settled there. The maid ran around the whole house and looked in every corner. But the boy was nowhere to be found. Only the guard at the gate said that some child had gone outside the estate, but he thought it was one of the servant's children. According to the guard's description, it was definitely Leo. Surely Raymond is looking for the boy. After all, the child is a hindrance and a very valuable witness in his cruel crimes. If this is the work of Raymond, then every minute of the child's life may be the last. He will try to make sure that the boy simply disappears and no one else knows about him. She will not allow these cruel killers to take this innocent boy. He is just a child and her task is to find and protect him from people like Raymond and Samantha. These vile traitors know how to make the victim come right into their hands at will. But Leo was at Sophia's estate the whole time, so how could they lure him out? The gatekeeper said that the child left on his own. The girl asked the maid why the guard at the gate let Leo through. After all, all the staff of the estate know that the Ducal family is protecting this boy and he is under constant supervision. But the maid said that a week ago, their old gatekeeper quit and a new person was sent in his place. He probably wasn't aware that Leo shouldn't be allowed outside the estate alone. This was also Sophia's fault. The servants in the house were informed about Leo, but everyone else was not in the know, and Raymond took advantage of this. He sent his spy to work for the Duke. While the girl was thinking, Ani ran to the gate and brought a new guard, who was on duty that morning. It turned out to be a young guy. He was very scared and nervous. 
The gatekeeper said that the boy approached him in the morning and asked him to draw him a road to get to the theater. The guy didn't know that it was forbidden to let the child in alone. At first, the guy was surprised by the boy's request, because as far as he knew, the theater does not give performances at this time of year. But Leo said he wasn't going to attend the show. He just needed to get to the theater. Annie ran up to them. The girl was holding a letter in her hands. She looked through Leo's room again and found an envelope with this message inside. The girl was crying, which means there is bad news. Sophia opened the envelope and began to read. The letter said that Leo's mother was alive and he could meet her near the theater building, but you need to come there alone, otherwise nothing will work out. But how did the boy receive this letter? The mail that arrives at the Duke's estate is carefully checked because it may contain important documents, papers for Sophia's father. One of the maids raised her hand. Yesterday morning she received correspondence. She gave important letters to the Duke's office and one of them had Leo's name on it. The girl thought that a friend had written to him. Therefore the maid, not suspecting anything wrong, took the envelope to the boy. She thought that she would make the baby happy that his friends remembered him and were interested in how he was doing. Sophia was overcome with real rage. Why do problems arise out of the blue? They hide this child from the whole world, trying to protect him, but it turns out that he left the estate unhindered. And the girl also noticed her next flaw. It is necessary to select servants more carefully and then distribute detailed instructions to each of them. Then many problems can be avoided. Before Sophia could shout to the maid to contact Alexis, she heard the familiar voice of her fiancé behind her. Bruno stood next to him. Ani preceded her order. The guys were frightened by the news from the Duke's estate, so they decided not to waste time and arrived immediately. In the next minutes, they were already communicating with the gatekeeper, who released the boy. Sophia handed Alexis a letter in which they wrote to the boy that his mother was waiting to meet him at the theater building. There can be no doubt that this message was sent to Leo by the scoundrel Raymond. Bruno suggested not to wait and go to the Imperial Palace to see the First Prince. The girl was all for it. We need to find this kid before Raymond does anything wrong. Little Leo made it to the theater without difficulty. He found it easily because the guard drew him a map. Although the building was large, no one, especially his mother, was here. The boy came even closer. Then he thought that perhaps he had misunderstood the message in the letter. His mother must be waiting for him inside the theater. So Leo decisively pushed the door and went inside. It was dark inside and the boy did not immediately understand who was standing in front of him. But the silhouette was unfamiliar. This is definitely not his mommy. But maybe this woman will take him to the right place. The stranger said hello and introduced herself as a friend of Leo's mother and then said that his mother was slightly ill. So she asked Samantha to meet her son and take him to her. The boy asked for forgiveness, but refused to go with the woman. His mother did not have friends from aristocratic society. She was only friends with ordinary people. Besides, he knows all of his mother's friends. The woman got nervous and then laughed and called the boy a naive fool. And then a man appeared behind her, whom Leo remembered very well. He killed his father. Raymond smiled sarcastically. It's a shame that this kid reminded me of this out loud. He could have saved his life, but he talks a lot and knows a lot of things that should be forgotten. Apparently, because of his good memory, he will die. The boy realized that this time he would not be able to get out of here, and he really regretted that he had not asked Mrs. Sophia to take him to the theater. It would be even better not to read that letter at all. Leo closed his eyes and prepared to die. But suddenly the clanking of swords was heard. Leo decided to see what was happening and simply froze with happiness. Mr. Alexis was fighting with Raymond, and Leo knew exactly who would win. And then the boy heard the familiar voice of Mrs. Sophia. He didn't exactly know where she was and just ran towards the sound. And a few seconds later, he found himself in such a warm and reliable embrace of the Duchess. Leo knew for sure that if Prince Alexis was here, then he would not give offense to either him or Mrs. Sophia. He wields a sword better than anyone in the world, and Raymond cannot compare with him. Sophia examined the boy to see if everything was okay with him, if the abnormal prince had injured him. And then she asked why Leo acted so recklessly. Did he really not suspect anything? The boy burst into tears. Of course, the letter seemed suspicious to him, and there was no signature on it. But the desire to see Mommy at least for a minute was beyond common sense. 
Sophia almost cried herself. How can she tell this sweet angel the truth about his mother? It will break her heart. She won't do that for now. We need to wait a while for everything to calm down. But then the boy looked at the girl and said that there was no need to remain silent about the truth. He had long ago guessed that this terrible man killed not only his father, but also his beloved mother. The Duchess cried with the child. She asked for forgiveness for hiding the bitter truth from him. But she said that his mother thought about Leo until the last minute of her life and asked Sophia to take care of him. Sophia didn't see Samantha approach them. She watched her and the child, but then decided to give herself away. She clapped her hands and said that the tragedy of the children's theater did not impress her. Raymond approached Samantha. The two of them began to laugh at someone else's misfortune. It seems they no longer even hid their terrible crimes. And it looked simply disgusting. Raymond said that there was no point in hiding, since the Duchess was already aware of all their tricks. But Alexis asked the killers to stop and stop these vile conversations in front of the child. Raymond laughed, but the second prince was not amused. He was tired of being silent and living all the mockery inside himself. So now he will show this vile criminal where he belongs. Raymond was furious. He knew he couldn't beat his brother in a sword fight. No one has yet been able to defeat the head of the Order of Knights. All his life he played with Alexis like a toy. Now he will also come up with something. He will not allow the offspring of some concubine to even think that he can take the throne of the Emperor. It is in Raymond that the right blood flows, and he will rightfully take this place. The next minute, Raymond fell from Alexis's crushing blow. The second prince did not forgive anyone for insulting his late mother, especially such a rotten person as the first prince. He will be able to protect his mother's good name. She truly was the most honest woman in the world and raised her son the same way. And Raymond doesn't even have the right to say her name. But the next moment, Alexis tried to calm down. He can't kill the scoundrel now. His guilt has not yet been proven. Therefore, everyone will think that the chief of the knights killed an innocent prince. Yes, he cannot kill his brother, but that's it for now. But no one forbade wounding the killer, so Alexis ran his sword across the cheek of this traitor. Raymond did not expect this, so he almost died of fear. Samantha also feared for her lover's life. She ran to him and made sure that the wound was not dangerous. But Alexis warned that only Raymond here bears the name of the killer. Raymond lost again. He has nothing more to do here because all his threats towards Alexis seem like baby talk and are not taken seriously. He felt himself becoming pathetic and losing control. He was leaving, despite all Samantha's screams that the situation cannot be left like this and Alexis needs to be taught a lesson. He can't do this. He is weak and pathetic, and all he can do is just leave. Fortunately, this time everything ended well, but all this is only thanks to Alexis and Bruno. Without them, not only Leo, but Sophia herself would not have survived. The boy was so exhausted that he fell asleep right in the carriage on the way home. He constantly asked for forgiveness for leaving home without asking. But the girl understood that love for his mother was more important to him. His mother is no more, and the boy knows about it. Therefore, Sophia must replace Emma for him and do everything possible so that Leo does not feel deprived of love and unnecessary in her estate. The love of parents is important for every person at any age, especially for young children. She remembered her past life. When her mother, father, and brother were killed in front of her eyes, she almost went crazy. The girl promised herself that this boy would live a happy life, and she would take care of it. She will protect him from all troubles, because the child has already seen enough evil and betrayal. The next morning, Bruno appeared at the Duke's house again. He was in good spirits and said that Sophia and Alexis's relationship was not progressing at all. They urgently need to go on a date. These words of the prince seemed strange to Sophia. Now is a stressful time and not much time for dating. It wasn't that she didn't want it. She actually really wanted it. But you need to expect an attack from Raymond and not think about dating. But Bruno had a completely different opinion. In one day that he and Alexis devote to each other, nothing terrible will happen. And then they will begin to fight for the throne with renewed vigor. The third prince reminded that although their marriage is considered fictitious, it is worth being alone with each other. He is sure that young people have something to talk about, and he will be with Leo. Maybe there was logic in Bruno's words. After all, when they defeat Raymond, they will have to become official husband and wife. 
Therefore, we need to spend more time together. Now they have a purely business relationship. But this cannot continue. There won't be a better opportunity to talk to each other anytime soon, so you should take the chance. Bruno also reminded that they should marry for love and not for calculation and mutual assistance. People notice everything, and if they behave in public like business partners, no one will believe their feelings. The third prince was absolutely right about their marriage. We must not forget that building the right relationship is much more important than simply entering into a marriage of convenience in order to achieve a common goal. But what does Alexis himself think about this? Did Bruno talk to him? They experienced many moments, but it is impossible to say that the young people talked a lot about their feelings. Sophia went on dates with Raymond many times, but she had never worried or prepared as carefully as she did now. This means that she simply had no real feelings for the first prince. The girl noticed long ago that the second prince could not get out of her head for a long time. She constantly thinks about him, remembers all the meetings and moments experienced together. And that means something. She doesn't remember the last time she chose a dress and accessories for a date so carefully. Her image shouldn't be too pompous, but she didn't want to look too simple either. Of course, you will have to ask your beloved and faithful maid for help. And as always, she will not let you down. She will do everything at the highest level, and the girl will look no worse than the princess herself on a date. The preparations lasted about an hour. Ani was in her repertoire. For her, it was a matter of honor to do everything to make her mistress look excellent. It was noticeable that Sophia was worried. Exactly at the appointed time, the front door opened, and Prince Alexis appeared on the threshold. To say that he was irresistible is to say nothing. The Duchess was speechless for a moment. The Prince greeted, complimented Sophia, and invited her to go to the carriage. Are they going somewhere? The girl thought that the date would take place in the ducal garden among the blooming roses. Thoughts were confused about both, so an uncomfortable silence reigned in the carriage. Nobody knew where to start the conversation. The girl was shy and afraid of seeming stupid or naive. The prince was also silent, afraid to say something unnecessary. A little later, the carriage stopped in the city center in front of the opera house. Sophia hoped that they would be among people, and she would be able to calm down a little. But it turned out that they would have a separate box. The young people settled down, but the performance had not yet begun. Alexis asked if the girl often visited such places and whether she liked theatrical performances. She replied that she had visited this place before, whenever possible. After being revived, she never visited this place. She simply didn't have the time or the opportunity. All her strength and energy were aimed at fighting and taking revenge on Raymond for her family. For some reason, the conversation turned to Raymond again. Alexis asked when Sophia realized he betrayed her. She replied that she was naive almost until the engagement and believed that her fiancé and her friend were ordinary friends. She lived with rose-colored glasses. But if I had been more attentive, it would not have been difficult to discern such an obvious betrayal. It's just that the girl grew up in a normal family and got used to trusting people. 